In times like this, I can't announce every move. So just, you, I need patience, exercise patience with me. I have a lot of great things happening. I can't, you know, usually I just tell you what I'm about to do. I can't say it. I can't say it um, for more than one reason, okay? Anyway, um, I, listen, it's only, you know, as I said, it's only one person we've ever seen come back from the dead. You know, that was Jesus. Okay, so it's only so many times we could have a funeral for this nigga. But we are going to just bask in the fact that, you know, there was at a moment in time, and this is why I speak so very directly, and I speak directly to him. There was a moment in time where that ego, it didn't feel like that. That ego had everybody shook. And your peers are watching me, and they're in, 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 in uh, like, they're like, oh, my God. No, no way this is happening. They think this is ridiculous. But I'm doing everybody a favor. That ego is going to come down a little bit and a little bit more. Okay. Um, we all have an ego, but, you know, it has been just just too much. In including him also. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm tell that little fool what, what, what fatal move he made. The moment you thought, and you thought this years ago, academics is like some peon platform I just step on and crush. In your own words. Yo, I got bitches with more followers than you. I know you're not saying that today. Okay. I know you ain't said that last week. I know you haven't been saying it in the last two weeks. Matter of fact, I was selling 6,000. I don't think, yo, matter of fact, I think I've been ratioing you every single time on Twitter. I don't think you're saying that, period. But it's a lesson I'm going to teach you, and I'm not done yet, okay? Uh, yeah, we're not doing the whole meat mill thing. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle them pretty much in like 45 minutes to an hour, and then we're going to move on a lot of other topics to talk about. Again, I, I actually do have a hectic schedule in the next cup, uh, coming weeks. Um, again, I, I can't announce all those moves, but I'm, I am glad you guys are here with me. Okay. Shout out to everybody who's on the King Academics page. If you're on Rumble, what up? My bad if you guys are a little bit late to the party today. Okay. If you're on the Academy page, of course, the, uh, Facebook page, what's up? And of course my Twitch people, what up as well? Now, let me tell you this, man. I'm not a, I'm, I've never been a bully. For people to know this, I've never been a bully. But I do think it's at the point with me and Meek Mill where intellectually, you might be able to make a point that I'm giving him a wedgie. Intellectually. Not physically. None of that. But I'm dealing with the nigga who's like, he's the first nigga I've ever ran into with negative IQ. If you could pick the worst, if you gave him a multiple choice test, which would be the best tweet to tweet in response? And in this climate, he would pick always the wrong option. Even when there's an option that just say all the above. He might even pick all the above and it's all wrong answers. It, it, he's that dumb. So, so I can't really bask in, you know, some of the, you know, theatrics and some of the laughter that we're about to have because we're not dealing with someone who's even all the way there. Okay. So intellectually, this is not even a fair fight to begin with, okay? Let's be very clear. I've thought 20 steps ahead. He's still over here, like, you know what I mean, off of Perk 30 going crazy on his phone. He barely could even type. Um, regardless, you got to realize, I studied the, 40 law, uh, the 48 Laws of Power, the Art of War, many other strategic above the shoulders type of chess playing games for moments like this, except I'm playing with someone who I don't even think he understands the board. Literally, there's a picture of him playing or what he thinks he's playing checkers on a chess board. <laughs> don't believe me? Don't believe me? Play the game like a king. Can't make this dumbass shit up, people. <laughs> Can't make it up, okay? Can't make this shit up, okay? <sighs> wow. Wow. Anyway. Um, I told you last time, you know, we we had a... um. I have a qualifying offer in my email for a deal potentially worth $2 million for, e for either of us. Uh, it was a million dollar guarantee if we showed up and boxed. 
um, celebrity boxing. I think the guy's name is Damon Felder. So I, I can't remember his name. I might be fucking up his name, so I don't want to do that because he seems like a very generous guy. But he offered me a million dollars. He offered me a million dollars. And the winner would get an additional million dollars. So that's $3 million up for the competitors, right? I thought I was rather fair and even, hey, listen, you know, it, apparently we had some issues. So, okay, we could just get some money. If he's everything he's said to be, he could get $2 million by beating my ass. Um, he has, from what I heard, politely declined that, right? Now, I'm going to make an example out of him today. And I'm probably going to show him why he should have took the boxing match. Because what he tries to do is this pseudo tough guy I'm cosplaying as a gangster and killer and it's usually worked against everybody who as they would say ain't like that and i'm one of those people who ain't like that you're right <laughs> except we don't believe it anymore even i don't even believe it the bunny hopping the half a brainness the ball in when you you get sent to jail for doing a wheelie the run around, it doesn't seem like the guy that I need to be scared of. But yet he gets on Twitter, puts out 50 threats a day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling on the people. Today, yes, this is a call to action of So to Speaks. I even have a monetary award for it. I might have to get off... Um, Twitch for a portion of this, but today we are going to show what being a pseudo tough guy and cosplaying as a gangster when you, the real money you're getting these days is from all of these funding for reform that you're getting a check for. You can't hold a picket sign over a dead body saying stop the violence and shoot up the block at night. We can't allow that to happen. So Meek Mill, we want to teach you a lesson. I'm going to have a call to action today. I got money involved for y'all too. That governor that he was sitting next to crying like a fucking baby. Meek Mill cry. Let's see if we can find that video. This governor here. Hold on. Let's find it. We all grew up in the streets. Uh-huh. And... We try to be better, but they labeled us felons. Also, I'm going to tell you another reason why I'm doing this, too. You see, when a nigga is playing both sides, I want to show him I'm better at being a civilian than he is. Remember? Keep in mind, for anybody who says, yo, act, you're doing too much. Remember, he called the governor, or the governor called him, and he told the governor, I'm responsible for murders. Well, we should probably tell the governor something our damn selves. So tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, we got to, you know, and this is not doxing. The governor of Pennsylvania, his name is Josh Shapiro. He's the governor of Pennsylvania. He's sitting right here. I'll show you him later in the same video where Meek was crying in. You're going to see the governor later on. Let me see. Uh, he's the guy right here standing to the right of him. He's the guy who's speaking as, right here. You know, if you want to play civilian and tough games, we could play the civilian games. And we're going to do it like this. That office, which, by the way, is a public office. We're not doxing anybody. As a constituent... Of Pennsylvania. I have a right to call the governor and tell him something I don't like. I have the right to send him an email to alert him to something he might not know. We'll be doing that tomorrow, okay? That phone line should be blown the fuck up and this will be everywhere. We're going to alert that governor of Meek Mill cosplaying as a killer and a gangster. He can't stand next to the guy who's encouraging violence when he's trying to have initiatives and go on speeches for possible re-election about stopping violence. We got to put an end to that today. Okay?
Sorry. Sorry. We have to play how we play. Okay? We just got to play how we play. I'm sorry. You can't be a better civilian than me because that's what I do. I vote, pay taxes, and I tell the governor when he's standing next to a low-life scum like Meek Mill. We're going to do it today. Anyway, uh, we will get to that very shortly. But before we get to that, chat, you know, yeah, I know I'm, not, I'm a nonviolent person. He's brought violence into the situation. I'm a nonviolent person. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say we could have boxed if he didn't kept using, like, these words of I'm going to give you a combination, which I'm like, hey, yo, my nigga, I don't want no combination from you. You might try to give me the same combination as the same, as you gave Diddy, but here's the thing. Since he didn't want to box, I have a better idea. I didn't even learn this one from the 48 Laws of Power. Actually, I kind of did. Chat, I did the most noble thing I think of could have done. So after eviscerating this guy's street cred, character, album sales, rap career, for the last week and a half, Meek Mill finally realized, and this is, chat, trust me, he's learning. He's stupid, but he's learning. He realized the power of media. I always told you the most powerful thing in the world is media. It controls the flow of information, and it could also control the narrative. Okay? You, it, 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 trust me. He who controls information is always the most powerful. That's why I tell every artist, never beef with media. You need to utilize them. You can use them as a tool. You use them. Don't beef with them. Meek is retarded. He would never understand why I would say that. Now, I'll tell you why I say this. After eviscerating this nigga's entire livelihood, okay, and I've kept it above the belt. We're not bringing in women and kids. We're leaving that out. But after eviscerating his entire career, street cred, all that type of stuff, the entire Philly is down to line up to say, yo, this guy is, he ain't the king no more. Matter of fact, his best friend, did you watch the episode I dropped today? He said, Uzi is the king. He said, that nigga ain't the king. He keep flopping. I didn't say it. That's what they're saying in the Philly streets. By the way, make Philly great again. What I did want to say is that, um, Meek finally came to his senses. This is when he realized that media has the power because he probably sat back and been punching the air and said, how the fuck did this peon named Academics do all this to me? The whole conversation has changed. They're all clowning me. He finally said, the reason why he did it is because he has a podcast and I don't have one. So he said, I want to have a podcast deal. I have a lot to say on many different levels. If you have a podcast business moving slow, I can reverse it. From Meek Mill. I've always been my own media. And I want to join the culture of black media. This boy trying to intern. As a media. Personality. Ain't that a bitch? The boy couldn't defeat me in the booth. Now he said he trying to. He trying to podcast with me. Oh, shit. Well, Meek, that's all you had to say. Now, this was an important win for me, people. Remember I told you about this boy's ego. You see, he comes from the school of thought that media works for the artists, and you could bitch them around, intimidate them, slap them up, jump them, threaten to kill them to get your way. That's how it worked when you're dealing with Hot 97, who needs an interview from you because you're the hottest thing. Because that's the only outlet you had at that time. These days, ah, duh. You know, you, you know, the, my, 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 my biggest flex is telling these artists, I make more money talking about you than talking to you. So I can sit here and keep talking about you. Because after I do one interview with you, it's like, okay, was well, there more to talk about? You answered the questions. I could just keep talking about you every day. Think about it. Now. I see me trying to get over to the podcast side, and I realized I took this out of the book of the book of Hove. This one was good. I said, wait, he's trying to podcast now? He don't want to rap no more. He flopped. Don't want to box. It's free money on the table. Now you want to podcast? Got you. Chat, I took this from the book of Hove. <laughs> Here we go. 
Watch this, chat. After he said this, I big dog this little nigga. I said, yo, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because, and this is why another thing with Meek is so stupid. How are you so rich? You have all these connections and you still come to Twitter to ask for the most basic things. Boy, don't you got an agent? You know, if you really wanted a podcast deal, you could just hit your agent. Maybe you're with CAA. I'm with UTA. You know, if I want, if I want a book deal, I wouldn't go on Twitter and say I need a book deal. I would call my agent. Hey, Big Act needs a book deal. Figure it out. Call me back. They gonna get their percentage. You know, I ain't gonna tell you what percentage they get off me. They gonna make it happen. So when you see Meek Mill be doing dumb shit like this, like I need a podcast deal, but he's tweeting it out, posturing. So he asked for it. I obliged. I offered him a million dollars. The best way to solve a beef with an op is to hire him. Meek, I'm trying to get you under the fold, okay? You can work for the academy too. You feel what I'm saying? Punch a time card, get up in the building, and start podcasting, my nigga. The only thing is we're going to have to fix the mics because you be shouting a lot. And we just got to make sure the way you be screaming in the, in the raps, when you screaming in, in our fucking studios, we make sure it's soundproof and that we record you right. So I offered him a deal. Here's the deal I gave him. People, this is great. I said, Meek, I'll offer you a million dollars up front. 52 episodes. One a week. You, you, you know that nigga's stupid. I was going to say 52 episodes for a year, but I know he wasn't going to get that that meant one a week, so I just had to put it out. Just, just write it out simply. One a week. I said, we own the audio and video with an option to renew for the second year. Now, now some people might not know podcast or like, you know, whatever, because some people thought that meant I own the thing. No, this is more of a distribution deal still, honestly. Right. Um, we we own the audio and video produced in the deal. That's how it normally works. Like if I pay you to produce something. Right? If I'm giving you a million dollars up front and you produce 52 episodes, those 52 episodes we would own. You get what I'm saying? If you make other episodes afterwards, you own them shits. We don't give a fuck. So only the episodes you you create in that deal, we would own. Just like the and by the way, here's the thing too. Meek Mill, I know your I know all your contracts from Atlantic. That's gonna be my next trick. I'm trying to get it to put it up on the screen. Cause all that big dog shit you've been talking about. From what I've heard, you've never gotten big dog numbers from your label. So me giving you a million dollar deal when your first deal you signed for way less than a million dollars. Boy, stop trying to act like a big dog, okay? This was a very generous deal. I, if you, and I think Vlad even agrees. I'll get to him in a second. So, I, so you know, I'm explaining the deal to y'all. And by the way, this is standard. This is standard. Just to let y'all know, I'm very transparent. Um, Technically... Like, for example, the Little Dirk episode. I That was an episode that was made and released while I was under a deal with Spotify. Now, Spotify, they're cool. Like, Spotify, they're cool if I take my old episodes and do stuff with them, but they own them. Spotify owns those episodes. You did it under our deal. Any episode I do now, I own. You get what I'm saying? But why the hell, if I'm paying you a million dollars, I wouldn't own those particular episodes. That's why I said, and what I mean by those episodes, that's why I said video and audio, because in podcast land, they actually still look at audio only. So strip, get the get rid of the video. Audio is a thing. Like, um, not to really snitch on nobody, or, but I like give you out a business game because this is why we bond, right? Like Drink Champs, they usually do two deals. Drink Champs usually has a deal just for their audio, and then they have a deal for their video that also has audio too. But but the video is a whole different thing, right? So, I, again, I don't want to be, be too much like trying to, exp it's not even exposing other people in the game, but that's just kind of what it is, right? Me, I've never really done deals. Um, well, I've only done one podcast deal in terms of me and Spotify. But the, any deal I would ever pursue, I wouldn't try to have two companies own the same thing like hey you guys get the audio or just the audio and then these guys get just the video i don't know i like both of them going to the same place right okay so um so i i, I said we'll own the audio and the video and here's the here's the great thing about it it's a one-year deal with an option for a second most pot by the way the deal i'm offering them you can't i guarantee name i want any podcaster in the game to get on the mic 
and say that they could get this deal from anyone else. Nobody giving this deal out. Factuals. Not one person giving out this deal right now because podcast deals are over. Podcast deals are over. And I'm going to tell you why it's over. I'm going to give you a lot of business game here. And Meek, you're stupid ass. I know you're in the back. Stay after class. We're going to give you a little bit more business sense about what's really going on. So cool. Um, so, so, so now, um, so yeah, so we're giving them a one year deal with an option to renew for a second. Obviously we'd own the option. It wouldn't be like him because obviously he's just going to use our production shit, get lit and then go get a bigger deal somewhere or try to get a bigger deal somewhere or go independent. So we would have the deal to renew for a second, but usually most podcast deals, they want to go three to four or they'll be like, yeah, we're signing you for one year. Cause they don't want to have to stuck being paying you. They give you one year, but they want at least Three options, which means if you're successful, they keep you in the deal for multiple years. We're just saying we need one option. Cool, right? By the way, let me re let me relate it to um, music. Meek Mill, I know about your contract with with Atlantic Records. You had uh, they signed you for two albums with like four, <laughs> okay? With like four options. I'm giving you the best option possible. One. You give us one, and you got one option. You signed to Atlantic for two and four. This is why they had to drop you. You didn't leave. They dropped you, okay? Because they had the option to pick up your deal while you wanted to negotiate. They told you your last album, sales were inflated. They spent a lot of marketing dollars. Basically was saying you're not worth your weight in gold. They also looked and weighed their, you know, uh, what they could get back on a return. If they picked up your next option and they declined and that's why you're a free agent. Nobody was hating on you. Nobody wasn't having a conspiracy theory. I'm giving you X's and O's, dollars and cents. You as a musical artist was not profitable to the margins that Atlantic wanted. So they dropped you like a bad habit. Put it like this. I'm giving you a million dollars. I know it says up front, which Vlad, you know, Vlad said, yo, good luck giving them up front. I wouldn't give him a million dollars to sign. We would do literally, um, what's a million dollars? It's about like 87000 per month. We'd pay him $87,000 a month per month. You know what I'm saying? $87,000 a month. He could invoice every month or quarterly, whatever. Feel me? So, you know, because you give a nigga like, I'm not giving no nigga <laughs> who keep rapping about gambling Rollies and cars a million dollars up front. He gonna do three episodes and dip on my ass. You feel me? Finesse the shit out of me. So we gonna pay him per month. Okay? That's it. Okay? Anyway. So I said, with an option in you for a second year, also, we're gonna bust down ads. So for people who say, well, a million dollars is low. First of all, you can't get a million dollars right now in podcasting. You just can't. You can't go out and get... This deal, unless, okay, and now I got to say, and by the way, they don't do these deals anymore, unless it's exclusive. Nowhere in my deal said he had to be exclusive. Do you understand? Now, if I said I have the Academy app that your podcast would have to be exclusive to, that million dollars probably triples or goes up more, if you get what I'm saying. Because it's only going to be released via my platform. So I'm hoping anybody who's going to listen is going to come to my platform. You pay usually about triple for exclusivity. Triple or more what the market would offer for exclusivity. I am keep saying this. I'm giving y'all the game. Listen, y'all never going to hear these niggas talk about this shit like this. They act like it's the boogeyman. But Big Act is here. You heard me? So, because it's not a... A, um, because it's not a, um, exclusive deal, that's why it's just a million dollars, even though a million dollars is a lot of fucking money. Now, let me give you one exception. Joe Rogan, allegedly, his new deal, he still got like $250 million, but it's not exclusive. He's a one of one. He's a fucking reindeer. He's a goddamn, like, you know, just, uh, what do you call it again? He's a fucking, like, he's a shooting star. He's getting the same money for an exclusive as he would for being on all platforms. And the only reason why he's getting that, not only is because he's Joe Rogan, is because he spent three years only being exclusive to Spotify. Spotify got a great return on that in terms of subscribing 
subscribe uh, subscribing podcasters and or not podcasters subscribing listeners and they drove the listeners so much that was good for them they were happy with the amount of people he brought to Spotify second of all and this is the other part this is why they're open with him putting back his shit on YouTube about a year and a half ago Spotify both they start boosting up their ad sales department and once they got into that heavily they realized that joe rogan was the single biggest driver of ads they were selling almost tv rates for his podcast nobody else but these niggas as soon as you hear these niggas say blue chew they get a thousand dollars i'm telling you this is a fact okay they get a thousand dollars as you hear these things yo hey your dick don't get hard get this blue chew Thousand bucks. Not saying it's a little, not saying it's a whatever. Thousand bucks. That's it. If Joe Rogan was supposed to read the, the exact same ad, at least a hundred and fifty thousand per that per that 30 second. Actually, I forgot where I saw his rate at for a 30 second read. Wild amount of money. This is just to showcase the difference between your local podcaster and Joe fucking Rogan. Just to let y'all know. I'm giving y'all the game, people. Meek. You better not fall asleep in class, Meek. Your stupid ass better stay up. I'm giving you game. Okay. Right. So, what they realize is that, by the way, also, I'm very honest and open. And I seen this on a Verge article, and I could tell this was the thing. Even when I was at Spotify. They would leverage Joe Rogan to help other shows that they had. There was cross collateralized. So maybe they have a, a sponsor who just wants Joe Rogan. You know what they would say to that person? Hey, you got to buy ads on Joe Rogan's show, academic show. It's not like they really want me. They want Rogan. But, spot, but Rogan is so coveted and had so much pull in terms of ads that they would be like, hey, if you want Rogan, you got to buy ads on these 15 other shows. That's just what it is. You know what they're going to say? All right, fuck it. Here, act, take that little 5K or whatever it is. I don't know, 5, 10K. I don't know, whatever. For, 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 I don't know what they were charging for. I didn't know that information that the Spotify is not going to tell you. Um, but yeah, they were down for that. So this is why Joe Rogan is the only show that has, is not exclusive anymore, but he's still getting the same amount of money because ad wise, they're leveraging how coveted he is, which means. Now that they let him be outside of Spotify, his analytics has now increased triple at least. So now, what if they used to charge, I don't know, I'm making these numbers up, say 150000 for like a 30-second ad read or a personal endorsement, now they're going to have to pay at least three hundred k and Spotify could make it make sense with them paying Joe Rogan that. Do you guys get it? I think you guys are smart. You guys get it. But, um, by the way, I, I'm not cooking meat right now. People say, yo, 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 chill out like, with the meat cooking. Like, we're not cooking right I'm giving you some game on just podcast deals, right? Um, so, yeah. So, I said, also, we're going to bust down 50% of ads that we bring in. Okay? Now, usually in an exclusive like, for example, like, uh, I'm pretty sure with the Rogan thing, they're not busting out ads with them. They just gave him that big lump sum. Hey, you get 250 mil, it's our jobs to go get that 250 mil. But when when you have usually a, a regular podcast deal, you want to, uh, unless you're trying to finesse these niggas, right? You know what I mean? There's mad companies I try to finesse, right? They'd be like, hey, I know you want the million, so take the million. You don't get none of the ads. Um, basically... We were down to do 50%, right? Uh, which, by the way, very generous, too. Very generous. You know I mean, sometimes people will, will do more on the... No, no, we're 50-50, which means if prize picks comes in, Um, I don't know, prize picks, they pay a lot of money. They might come in like, hey, we got 50000 we got 100000 we got 150000 whatever. And half of that would go to Mink, right? So, so in addition to the million dollars, he would be getting half of that as well, right? Fashion over... I don't know, pretty little things, all these other things, all that, whatever, whatever, right? Now, for people who are like, you know, misinterpreting this and be like, yo, why would he sell his podcast? I keep telling y'all about owning video and audio is only what was produced. He would still own the podcast. So he would own the IP of the podcast, just like how I own the IP of off the record, right? I own it, right? And I said, uh, but we share the IP as long as we're in a deal. It's the same thing that me and Spotify had. While we were in the deal, 
off the record was co-owned by me and them. Really just that they could make decisions and that they could flex whatever in terms of how the podcast was going to be on their network. But after the deal is over, they're like, you own this shit, right? It is what it is. Okay. Um, so anyway, that was the deal. Now, I know it's a little boring to you, but I love explaining business type shit. That, that kind of makes me feel good. But I will say this was a very generous podcast deal. But of course, Meek the Dunce, even after I offer him such a lucrative deal that I'm telling you, you can't get on the market right now because these days people are willing to, they're willing to give you ad incentive deals, which is all based on the ads, but guaranteeing you this amount, especially for a non-podcaster or someone who doesn't have an established, you're not going to get it, bro. You're just not going to get it. And you heard Vlad said, yo, uh, and by the way, I did say, yo, we're going to handle the production, so we're paying for production costs, we'll record, edit, and obviously promo is part of the deal. Okay. Which, by the way, I think is an amazing deal. Uh, Vlad says, good luck giving someone a million dollars up front and expecting them to do a job. That's true. They have never done for 52 weeks straight. He says, Spotify tried to do the same with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Yeah, that is true. Anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. Let's saute this nigga just real quick. Now. Meek after, uh, well, actually, let me go to my, let's go listen to Meek's best friend. There's some very interesting parts in this. I gotta get time stamps. Uh, when? When you hear that? It was 50,000 for somebody. Yeah, that was for my bell. Thank Still you. Something. That was before I went to, I went to jail. That was a part of me getting away from there. You know what I'm saying? Not being heard. Excuse me. My voice too quiet over there. I'm not being heard, not being mm -hmm. respected. Let me get away from there and do my own thing. I got away from there and started doing my own thing. Unfortunately, when I was doing my own thing, I had, a, I had some legal business going on. I was finna go to jail. I went to jail, I did some time. Now I'm back home, I'm back to doing what I was doing. You know, I got away from there to create my own thing. Huh. Yo, hold on, I gotta show you, yo, the part about Drake is hilarious, hold on. I knew that. Don't involve everybody. Don't I'm right here at Delilah's. Oh, I'm right here at Cincinnati. He said he went from North to yo, South. Yo, I'm right here. Taking a picture and posting the next day. That's like the same. Now I'm about to go home, right? He gonna wake up, he gonna be with his moment. We just got finished riding a bike all day. Really? Here we go. No way, you're lying. So he's telling yeah. the story of how the, the, the beef started with, uh, 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 the beef started with Drake. This, he left the store. They was arguing outside. They was outside, they got big feelings. They was, everything was cool. They get to arguing, like normal stuff. We, we was on pedal bikes. We was riding pedal bikes. What? Yeah, in Miami. Oh, this is Miami. Yeah, he's in Miami. Me, me, and cool. Riding pedal bikes. We on our way back to our hotel. Pedal bikes, like regular bikes. I can't even imagine niggas riding pedal bikes. <laughs> That's not crazy. Yeah, we used to come through the streets like that. Miami Beach. Yeah, just us three. Oh shit. Me at the top of his career, no security. Riding through that pedal bike, people could touch that ball. That's why he's so strong like that. Nothing happened. Oh, it's dirty. When you yeah. moving with him at that time, if y'all got no security, you like, man, something happened because he is his own security, though. Like, he ain't no chump. He is his own security. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm in super security. He is his own, though. So, they saw. By the way, this is one of the takeaways from this interview. You know, Miki's going to call this a hate, uh, hate ass interview, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think the dude was. You, you, I walked away from this saying, man, I could tell he feels hurt, bro. Like, he ain't come here to bash me. He ain't come here really on some. Like, he obviously said things that probably was not congruent with, like, Meek Mill's image or whatever the case is. And maybe that's what we're going to say. He exposed them or whatever. But he ain't, I could tell, like, he, bro, he felt hurt. Like, yo, you let me down. Like, I put everything on the line for you. I took a lot of risk for you. I went to jail behind certain shit. And 
you ended up blaming me for your house getting robbed and you ended up talking about me in a, in a way that is just not how you would talk about somebody who put their life on the line. And he's hurt. I'm going to be honest with you. And you can, you can tell by the look in his face. Arguing. When they argue, what are you doing? Are you just like, oh, man, here we go again. Yeah, shit. So yeah exactly. You blowing my mind. I'm trying to. This shit happening again. People now is leading outside. The, the store is shut down, though. But they in there, so ain't nobody else in there. They you always had a good relationship with Drake, though, I would think. Yeah, we did. We had a good relationship with Drake. You see, Drake, mess with Drake in his squad. Chubbs, Rox, they was the guys. We mess with them guys. You know what I'm saying? We mess with Drake. Everybody had their own relationships with different people in Drake crew. You know what I'm saying? So the argument starts. How did, how did the fuck you get to the tweet? It did. They argued, whatever. They was throwing, she got in the, when they stood outside the store and argued. Keep it 100. She definitely said, that's why I like Drake fuck, man. Say it again? She probably said, that's why I let Drake fuck. Shit. <laughs> I would have been crazy like that <laughs> too. No, 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 I'm saying, hey, like, what the, yo, man, there gotta I, be something that led to the twins. I, 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 I ain't gonna lie, I'm funny. I don't give a fuck with that. I'm funny as hell. Oh, Drake being involved in the argument. It was never about Drake. Far as I know. That's why I was lost like everybody else was lost. Like, yo, I didn't know that no tweet was being going on. I ain't, I, it was an Instagram. It wasn't a tweet. But, while we riding back to, from the um, store, when we going back to the hotel. When, when you in the car. Listen, when we going oh back man. to the hotel, we ain't in the car. We on a okay. pedal bike. Oh, shit. We on pedal bikes. He wrote that tweet on a pedal bike? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Like this, leaning on a handlebar. <laughs> Yo, no. <laughs> Drake, you a bitch. I can't imagine that. No oh, way, you're lying. Look at, this, look at the pose, bro. He had on a blue Belargo shirt. Shout out to Belargo. Shout out to Tiff Belargo and stuff like that. I was getting, I was getting paid to work with them. That's a different story. No, no, I, uh, I heard that. So I want to get into that uh, too. But we was on, the, but we was riding our pedal bikes back. We was going, we was staying at the, uh, at the one hotel. We riding back up. Me and Coon, Coon first. I'm second. I'm trying to stay close to me. He playing, he playing the back. I'm trying to stay close and pay attention to what's going on. But he riding. He just doing this. Phone dead. Coon phone dead. We've been out all day. We get to the hotel, take him to his room, me and Coon go to our room. Is he drugged up? Is he liquored up? No. He's sober? He, he, yeah. Probably he's drunk some lean the night before and shit like that. Probably, no. You know, he's always blaming on the perks of that probably, time. Like, must be like 30. 30. Yeah, he, he had his shots. Everybody got their shots. Yeah, he do his thing. You know? He yeah. do his thing, you know. Yeah, but you know, he was at that moment. We just got finished riding a bike all day. Really, yeah. we was on our exercise. We was working out for real. You know what I'm saying? We did our thing. We riding back to the hotel. We ready to get dressed. We ready to go out, chill, whatever we ready to do for the night. Our daytime was over. I get to the room, Coon gets to the room, we plug our phones up on the charge. As soon as they come back on, they're like, beep, 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 beep. All these messages. Everybody calling. Yo, what? why are you letting him do that? What the, do what? The hell are you talking about? So he wasn't talking to y'all about it. Man, fuck this nigga Drake. Man. No, man. Go. You won't hear me? We get back and we get in the phone calls like, yo, we, why did y'all allow him to do what? What the fuck is y'all talking about? What did he do? Go to his page and see this. Go to this page, nigga done posted up a whole long ass story about this dude. And I'm sitting there and I'm reading and I'm like, yo, what the fuck transpired between him and Cuz? Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> it's like, Shh. I walk over there to Cuz's room. I go back to his room. Do that for me. Sitting there like, it's done. It's done. Fuck it. Fuck him. That's what it is. Did it? All right, cool. We got to stand on that. Now, whatever happened, happens. That's how it is. Damn. Damn. How can you do that? Yeah. Yo, there's some uh, very interesting parts in it. He talks about Nikki. He talks about, you know, other people around. Uh, he talked about Karen. I got to hit Karen Civil because I, I, I meant to hit her because I know her name came up in this. He used to date Karen Civil at a time. And you got to realize Karen Civil is like, like she's Olivia Pope in this industry, right? And, um, uh, I, I guess, you know, 
according to him, Meek was telling him, yo, you got to stay with this chick because this chick is going to make sure, like, you know, we're good in the game and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, you guys go check out the whole thing, man. I, I want to see what you guys kind of, like, you know, uh, what's stuck out of, uh, to y'all. I'm not going to sit here and watch the whole thing. Uh, if, if there is – somebody says – Karen Civil from the Joe Budden Network. If if that's only where you know Karen Civil from, you wow. Karen Civil, like most, like used to work around Dipset back in the day. Karen Civil, basically, I think the the biggest or the thing that kind of catapulted her into a really powerful position when she brought a lot of artists who never been online. See, you gotta remember, like she's been around that long. She was that face for them online or who managed their online shit. Like, first of all, like Wayne, Wayne and them was never on Twitter, was never, they never knew about websites. And she was the person that was dealing with that. And then Wayne went to jail and she was like up the front line for a lot of handling his shit. Obviously where she worked with Nipsey afterwards. Yeah. Now Karen, Karen, that chick, I ain't going to lie to you. You can't even play with Karen. Truth be told, she's been in this game a long time, r moves really savvy. She's uh, super respected, super respectful, and um, they were they were dating. Shit, I ain't gonna lie to you. Karen Civil was one of those first people that made me realize, bro, you could you could live a better life than these rappers if you just work behind the scenes. I remember seeing her with like a Rolls Royce, and I was like, how the fuck did she get that? Do you know what I'm saying? And then you get to realize that, man, the money in music and, and rap just wasn't for the entertainer. Like, managers, like, if anybody's seen Scooter Braun, that nigga is getting to it. Anybody seen Steven Victor, that nigga is getting to it. Dre London, that nigga is getting to it. A lot of these managers actually, they be looking very well off more than even, like, shit. I don't know if P really shows it, but shit. I see my man P. Uh, at Super Bowl, and I said, "Damn, man, I could just." I, I look at him. I said, "Man, that three hundred million just dripping off you." Pause. You know, he just sold QC to Scooter Braun's company, but he's still the CEO of QC. So you know what I mean. So he he's up a, at least three hundred million just off the sale, and he was already probably making, who knows, forty to fifty million every year off QC. So shit, he up a ridiculous amount, right? But yeah, um, yeah. So that's who Karen Civil is. Uh, he speaks about that. He speaks about the Nikki stuff. He speaks about the dynamic. He speaks about how uh, Meek used to just basically give niggas, which I, I thought that was foul. I don't know if maybe I'm, I'm like, looking into it too much. Is that Meek would give people DC chains, like Dream Chaser chains, and then just take them back at the end of the night. And I think we're used to, especially like even with the King Von situation, he bought chains and gave it to people like, hey, this is a gift to you. Apparently, and, and this guy even said it. He said, bro, we weren't really getting paid like things went kind of crazy when we're not really getting paid or compensated and we got to do other things some people start selling pictures some people started whatever whatever and i do believe that kind of led to like the chasers moving and breaking up a little bit because yeah if i'm not paying my wolves and then my house get robbed of course i'm gonna think my wolves robbed it because i'm like how the fuck they knew how to get in there how the hell they knew we was there yeah you're gonna think it's your own team and it's going to be fueled by the fact that you never paid them. You never were compensating them. So, you know, it is what it is. You, it's, it's a pretty good story. You guys can go check it out. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, before we get off the meat mill train, man, uh, we, we got to do this one thing, people. We got to do this one thing here, people. And I ain't going to lie. Uh, um, Twitch, I love y'all, but I don't want Twitch hit me with no warnings for this, even because even though this is a public office, we're about to, we're about to do this. All right, so I'm gonna get off Twitch for one second. Twitch, I get back. Okay. Anyway, people, this is a call to action, man. We're gonna stop the fake bunny hop thugging from Meek Mill. I'm sick and tired of it. Okay. Now I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna do this two ways. First and foremost. We're going to write a letter letter to our Governor Shapiro, okay? And I encourage everybody to go to, right, governor.pa.gov. You can do it with me. Do it at home. You can even do it while you're watching this on YouTube. We all got to do this because it's the only way to handle a fake thug like him, okay? First and foremost, you're going to go here, and then we're going to hit contacts and requests, okay? 
And wait, wait, hold on. How do I, how do we write the fucking letter? There's a, there's like a whole little thing here. Where we can write a letter. Here we go. Uh, no, no, not contact and press. How do we, how do we write to the nigga? News. No, wait. Contact the governor's office. Perfect. So go here. Contact the governor's office, and we got a form to fill out. Chat. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. The hater is in me is strong tonight because I'm filling this shit out. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Word. Livingston Allen, nigga. <laughs> I'll put my government on this bitch. Okay? <laughs> uh I gotta put my address. Uh I'll I'll, I'll uh Oh, I'll, I'll use my Pennsylvania address. Oh, okay, I can't tell y'all where that is. Okay. Anyway, this is the message. Let's just get to the message real quick, man. Dear Mr. Governor, I am a concerned citizen residing in the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> the hater in me is strong tonight. <laughs> Pence, wait, Pennsylvania. I'm a, I'm a concerned citizen residing in the state of Pennsylvania about the individuals that you choose to surround yourself with given your stance on anti hold on anti violence and also reforming the prison system this is going to be a lot of hate chat we're going to have this that you could copy and paste well actually no send your old letter cuz i don't want them to think this is spam send your old letter but it should be around this okay <laughs> Now, here's where the Google comes in. This is going to be one of my finest work. Charles the White, I know you'll be proud. Here we go. Um, Pennsylvania Governor Meek Mill. We got we to gotta figure out when it happened. Here we go. Oh, also, we're going to hit up this news, uh, this news site, too, because we need, we need to get an interview with them, too. Okay. Philadelphia. Okay, great, great. We just wanted to know when it happened. Okay. He signed three bills into law. They aim for criminal justice reform. Okay, here we go. Independence Mall. Where he signed it. I need to know what bills. Josh Shapiro signed three bills. Independence Hall. Prison reform. We gonna get him out of here, Chad. I ain't gonna lie to you. No more fake thugging. He, he, he listen for anybody who might. Number one, it is kind of hate, but I'm gonna be honest with you. We can't have a guy who's cosplaying as a gangster in the daytime, and no, no, as a as a reform activist in the daytime, and a whole killer who's spinning blocks, spraying spraying up cars with switches, and copping Dracos. We can't have the same guy doing both. You gotta pick a side because. I, just like I can't be a thug and a civilian, he can't be an activist and a thug. I'm sorry. Can we force him to pick a side? We're going to force him to pick a side today. Okay, here we go. Uh, no, 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 no. We got to find the reform. Here we go. Is this? Oh, perfect. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Perfect. I'm going to make some shit up. I ain't going to cap with you. As someone who has... Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, choose to surround yourself giving your stance on anti-violence and also reforming the... Uh, reforming... I don't even know how to say it. Hold on. We got this, though. Reform. Reform in the. Okay, okay. The Pennsylvania probation system. The individual you stood next to and used as the example of such needed change and reform. Is a menace to society. I'm sorry. I ain't got no other way to say it, bro. 
I go, I ain't got no other way to say, Chad. I ain't gonna lie, dog. I ain't got no other way to say, bro. I ain't got no other way to say it. Recently. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, no, no. I got to make this shit spicy. Hold up. Let me see. Duh, 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 duh. Recently, he's threatened to either have killed or harmed. Meek, I told you. I tell him way better than you. <laughs> you told that nigga on the phone. We about to tell him with a thousand emails. <laughs> Recently, he's threatened to harm, to have killed or harm at least half a dozen other black men, including another rapper named Poundside Pop. And a civilian member, oh, watch this, esteemed member of the press, DJ Academics. <laughs> Try to be more proud of myself. Okay. I have followed up with your office multiple times. We just gonna cap it up to see if this behavior is representative of someone who should be the face of reform in our beloved state. One more do I need to add to this shit, child. One more I need to add to this bitch. I have screenshots and videos proven. Oh, screenshots, videos, and tweets. Y'all used to get. I used. Y'all used to be going crazy in college, like typing up essays. Like yo. Yo, teacher said, give me a one three one. I knocked that shit out in a bit. You feel me? Of with proof of these things. And okay. As someone I I I'm just making up some lines now. As someone who has had my three uncles incarcerated for over 20 years and then put on probation for over 10 years. Change behavior should be rewarded Y'all gotta help me write this shit, Chad. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me go in the chat real quick. Y'all got to help me write this. Change behavior should be rewarded. However, if a individual showcases time and time again on public platforms, they... What the fuck? Wait, no, no, hell no. Damn, we only have a thousand characters? Bro, I can't even tell in this amount. All right, fuck all that. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we, we got to keep it short then. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I can't, we got to take out this last line. Fuck. I thought it said like 10,000 shit. Oh, we ain't even mentioned Meek's name. If we going to tell, we got to... What's his real name? I got to put his government too. Meek Mill. What's his name? His name is Robert Rameek Williams. Say less. Me, this is how you really tell. Okay, okay, okay. The individual you, you stood next to. Robert. No, no, hold on. Let me delete this last one right here. Robert R Meek Williams, a.k.a. Freak. No, no, no. I can't put Freak Mills. No, no, no. Meek Mills.
There we go. And use it as an example of such needed change um, and reform is a menace to society. Recently, he threatened to kill or harm at least a dozen other black men, including rapper Poundside Pop and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a civilian, an esteemed member, an esteemed member of the press, DJ Academics. This is concerning to me. Perfect. There we go. All right, chat. Uh, listen, let's read it over real quick. There, Mr. Governor. I'm a concerned citizen residing in the state of Pennsylvania. No, no, okay, 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 okay. This is actually a run-on sentence, ain't it? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to put residing because I think you got to put your address above. I'm a concerned citizen. Inquiring about the individuals you choose to surround yourself with. Given your stance on anti-violence and reforming the Pennsylvania probation system, the individual you stood next to, okay, when did they sign that bill? Because I want to put the date that they fucking, you know what I mean? That he could know what the fuck I'm talking about. He, it was at Independence Hall. Is it here? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, December 18th. December 18th, you're right. Okay. Sorry, so good. The individual just. Just two. On December 18th. 18th. 2023. Robert Rameek Williams, a.k.a. Meek Mill. And use him. As the example of such needed change and reform is a complete menace to society. Recently, he threatened to have killed or harm at least a dozen other black men, including another rapper named Poundside Pop and a civilian and a steam member of the press, DJ Academics. This is concerning to me. Why is this person who you choose to align with for this effort? Damn. Hate never looks so good. Holy shit. Uh, what should be the message topic? Here we go. Correctional services, criminal justice. Ain't nothing better. There we go. Here we fucking go. By the way, tomorrow chat. This is where I got some bread for y'all. I'm going to send it to y'all on Cash App. You see this number right here? All y'all niggas call that shit. I promise y'all. Y'all got to get a phone recording if you, want, if you want me to pay you though. And if they send you the voicemail, I'm not paying you. But because I know the first couple ones, they're going to answer. I need you on the phone with them. Real talk. You on the phone with them? Saying basically this, saying, hey, listen, I'm just a concerned citizen. Yo, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things online. I see a guy who was sitting there with the governor talking about anti-violence. Also talking about prison reform and probation reform basically he's online threatening to kill all type of people told my he got switches dracos all type of stuff that imagery is concerned and just just capture what the fuck they say okay tape that motherfucker okay so this is yo they probably open at eight o'clock nigga i'm even calling tomorrow i ain't gonna lie to y'all all right now this is this is complete hate i ain't gonna lie to you this is beautiful okay uh let me just put in uh, my PA address. I don't want want that shit to get leaked. Actually, nah, I got a better one. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Fuck. Give me one second. Sir. Gotta make sure this shit is right. You feel me? Wait, why 
why is this like that? Perfect. I got a chat. All right, y'all know my address? Look how devious. I'll dox myself just for the effort. Fuck it, man. 1528. Y'all can see it? East Burke Street. <laughs> oh, man. 19125. Let's see. One nine one two five. Perfect. What county? What county? It's Philadelphia County, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, let me put my email in my bad chat. We just want a legit response. I ain't even capping with you. I'm putting a real email in this bitch. Okay, all right, perfect. They said they want me to put my number in there. Okay. All right. Process it. Perfect. Your form has been uh, uh, submitted successfully. Uh, chat, listen. Tomorrow, please call this number. We got it. We, we got to let the governor know about this fake thug online, man. We sick and tired of it, man. It, it, it's been fifteen death threats in the last like four days, bro. We sick and tired of this nigga, man. We gonna have to take his phone. Put him back on probation. We gonna have to do something or get him off the reform team. Okay, don't put him back on probation. Okay, I'm not that much of a hater, but but get him off the reform team. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we can't have we can't have this type of guy. You know what I mean? Basically, fake thug in one minute and then gang and gang banging the next. We can't have it happen. All right. Okay. All right, people. Enough meat mill shit, man. Um, please go watch that interview. We got Quilly coming up next, and um, salute to everybody from Philly, man. Make Philly great again. All right. Uh, by the way, you know, again, there is, you know, for, for everybody who's in Philly who's going to see this part, there's a bigger effort as well. Unfortunately, Meek was a hater for a lot of these people. I know you're going to be like, Actually, you have your, your, your axe to grind. But the, the goal in this, and I, I told Dean this today. I said, today you got the Internet lit. Everybody's looking at you. OK, what I want you to do is. Whatever you felt like wasn't getting that attention from Philly, let's funnel it there. And I told him, I said, yo, send me some shit when I repost pieces of this interview on my main page. I want to post what you want to promote, whether it's another artist who was never getting that shine. So th that's, that is, there is a point to this, too. So whatever attention that comes from this, we're trying to funnel it to some artists who probably never got the attention. And it doesn't have to be, oh, those artists or whoever don't like me. It's just like, no, this is still about Philadelphia at the end of the day. Okay. All right, people. Let's move on. Uh, we should talk about like Sexy Red and Aiden, but uh, it's not really want to talk about it that much. Okay, let me see what else has been going on. Yo, the Boosie and Kanye thing has been kind of like wild, right? So, essentially, Boosie dropped a video today, and um, he's been kind of responding to Kanye, who essentially kind of like, you know what I mean? He was basically saying, I I'll play the clip. In the Big War interview, he said he's responsible for every type of style, including Thug, including Future. He said he's responsible for other things as well. You know, um, Drake's and everybody else. And, you know, obviously Future ain't going to say nothing. Even though, by the way, I do think he got a good point about the Future thing. Because at first I was saying it was ridiculous. And I think the sound, no. Well, well not the sound, but like the type of shit Future does, no. Because Future's like, but allowing that sound to exist, we got to give Kanye the credit 
of breaking down the barriers that allowed those things to even get an ear. And I think that's where he's going to have that inflated ego. And I, I got to give it to him because without him wearing that pink polo and without him also taking a leap of faith and start to explore certain different type of music and not only just doing the boom bap sample type of records, we probably wouldn't get a lot of these other type of styles or genres accepted. I'm not saying he created, but accepted. And let me see if I can go back to what he said. I could get his own words. This is what he said. By the way, let's get back on, um, what do you call it again? On Twitch. Here we go. Game. I am, but not under Lucian. Mm. You're saying I didn't invent it. every style of music of the past 20 years. I created the genre. I created weekend genre, Trav, Drake. You know, every, 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 I'm going to say with all love, Future and Thug also because the auto tune album. Mm -hmm. 808. If you think about it, no one think about, everybody think about Trav, Weekend and Drake, but no one thinks about Future and Thug also. The auto tune album. Now, everyone, they added what it was to it, but here's a new genre. It's called Making Your Own Money genre. genre. And of this music game, I am, but not under Lucy. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're saying I didn't invent it. Every style of music of the past 20 years, I created this genre. Mm -hmm. I created Flip, weekend yeah. genre. I, uh, okay. Trav. Okay. Tra Trav, definitely. Drake. Drake, yeah. You know, every, 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 I'm going to say with all love, Future and Thug also because the auto-tune album. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ate a waste. If you think about it, no, think about, everybody think about Trav Weekend and Drake. Okay. Anyway, when he said that, uh, Boosie just came out <laughs> and would just be like, yo, I think Boosie was like, yo, what is this nigga talking about? Like, you know, he didn't create basically what, you know, his type of genre is right and um let me see if i can find boosie saying something and then basically kanye coming out and saying all right yeah let me amend that uh no i did not create okay okay he said this is what boosie said boosie said not all genres not every style not boosie music you can't relate to nothing i rap about or your music. Nobody listens to Kanye and the projects or the trenches. I'm going to go ahead and say it. My people don't relate to you. Okay? Okay. Uh, then Kanye corrected himself by saying, I just saw that White Me Down was made in 2007. I take no responsible for whatever that genre would be called. Yo, that is such like a shady comment. He said, yo, I take no responsible for whatever the fuck that is. It's almost like he's calling it trash. You know what I mean? He's like, I take no responsibility for that bullshit right there. Uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> he said, I take no responsible for whatever genre that would be called. Now, I ain't gonna lie. That set Boosie off, man. Because Boosie then came back and said, the genre of music I make is called Boosie music. It makes you cry. It makes you smile. It makes you dance. It gives you motivation. It makes you think. It really raised people. I uh, really raised people through music. It's real heartfelt music. No rapper has raised the most street niggas than me. Is that true, people? I thought Gucci raised a lot of people. I don't know. Okay. What about Snoop Dogg? Uh, maybe not. Okay. I make music that makes you feel like we grew up in the same house together. Wipe Me Down is not a genre of music. It's a song. 07. What? I was almost a decade in. I've been putting out this real heartfelt shit since 98, 99. They just don't give real niggas flowers no more. But I give them to myself. Legend. Okay? Now, after that was said, uh, he got back on live and said this. How many rappers I raised out there, bro? Like, who don't give me my flowers? <laughs> Everybody quiet, bro. <laughs> they don't want to be looked at. They don't want to be on my side and be looked at like you supporting Boosie. That's what I be thinking it is. 
But they get Kanye his flowers, people like that, but Boosie, you know. Just say he talking about black people. In his word, this college, but he is white. Ain't nobody raised more mother than me, bro. Not just most of the street athletes. Oh, kind of, bro. Like, a lot of just don't vouch for me because they don't want to look like they're on my side. You know, that's a side that. <laughs> A lot of motherfuckers don't want to look like they own. They don't want to feel like they got the same judgments as me, you know. They can't no fuck with me making real music. Like That's a different. When you raise somebody, that's different. It ain't talking about, oh, I like a couple of your songs. It's different. <laughs> Where rappers can say, who got fans come up to them and say, you raised me. That's different, though. I mean, if you real these days, people hate on you. Like, people, people don't like, people don't like when you real, bro. You know how many rappers I, okay. Now, I think Boosie is trying to get in a conversation. I mean, I don't think, you know, you know, uh, again, I, I think the type of music that Boosie makes because it's not mainstream. And I, and I think what, what Kanye was trying to aim to, like, we got to use a little bit of sermon, right? Kanye was talking about mainstream music, bro. Like, he ain't talking about every fucking type of music ever. He's not talking about shit that was before him. Respectfully, Boosie's been doing music before Kanye. That is a fact, right? So, again, you know, I, I think Boosie wants to be a part of the conversation, but I don't think necessarily Kanye was talking about music that predated him nor was he talking about every type of music that isn't mainstream. The artists he mentioned, from Drake to Travis to uh, uh, Weekend to Future and Thug, mainstream artists, that most of their music has mainstream appeal. Boosie, while Boosie has a cult following, Boosie does make hood street music, which is very unique to him. And yes, people, it's almost like a genre called Boosie music. It's not necessarily mainstream as the other artists. Now, granted, some people might be like, well, yo, the nigga said every 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 musical style. Uh, we got to use some type of brain power to be like, bruh, it's no way he could think he created some shit that started before he started making music. So I don't think Bootsy should have felt offended. Now, a person that did respond was Kid Cudi. Did y'all see what Kid Cudi said? Kid Cudi was, I thought Kid Cudi was, yo, what's up with these pictures Kid Cudi be having, bro? Yo, yo, bruv. Yo, bruv. Yo. Yo, bruv. Yo, bruv. Yo, yo, come on, dog. Yo, what are we doing right now, bro? Bro, what are we doing right now, dog? Anyway. Fuck. Man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I used to rock with Kid Cudi music so heavy. Anyway, he had he had tweeted something out, or, or, or hopefully he didn't delete it, but it was basically kind of like, you know, a little bit shady. Uh, not necessarily, I hate using the word shady, but, but you know, he was kind of subliminally responded, if, if you ask me, right? Okay, here we go. So remember Kanye said he, he really just created everything, and then... You see Kid Cudi, he tweets out an article. And let's read this article. We could probably, actually, I think that this is a Wikipedia link or something. I don't know. But, but it's citing actual articles. It says, uh, acute and often destructive ways, Kid Cudi's sound is what inspired and led Kanye West to create his cathartic 808s and Heartbreak album in 2008, with West later stating that he and Cudi were the originators of the style, kind of like what Alexander McQueen is the fashion. Everything else is just Zara and H and M. Let's actually go find that. By the way, keep in mind we're calling the governor tomorrow. We gotta get Meek Mill off the campaign trail. That's a fact. Okay. Um. Let me see. Let's look that up. Everything is Zara H and M. 
um, Alexander McQueen, Kid Cuddy. We, we're going to find, okay, here we go. We want to find the original article. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2018. 2018. Okay, Zara. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. After those sessions, Kanye excitedly told Complex. Um, oh, never mind. So, so this is even from an old, uh, old, uh, older article. Um, this is from the Kids See Ghost that happened a few years ago. But apparently, apparently, um, the the comment about origination came from ten years before that when they recorded "Ain't Away in Heartbreaks," or at least what Kanye did, right? It says after those sessions, Kanye excitedly told Complex, "Do we have a link on that? We don't have a link on it." Me and Cuddy are the originated styles, just like how Alexander McQueen is the fashion, and everything else is just Zara and H and M. Okay, since then they've collaborated on a bunch of proje uh, projects and whatever the case is. Okay. <sighs> Kid Cudi threw a monkey wrench into my thought process with Kanye. He did. And this is where, uh, you know, without saying any, you know, names, this is where I wish I had, um, I, I used to have, you know, some Kanye defenders to go to war with over topics like this. But maybe I could just do it with you guys in the chat. After I kind of went back and I did a lot of research. Chat. I think Kid Cudi is the guy. From Hey, hear me out. Now, Kanye is a more, more successful, better artist overall. Bigger innovator overall. But most of these styles that Kanye took credit for in that interview really came from Cuddy. Kanye worked with Cuddy and adopted them. Adopt again, he adopted them and made them mainstream and he like Kanye's responsible for changing the whole state of music or the sound of music, but did he come up with those himself? I can't say he did, people. I can't say he did. I can't say he did. I'm going to be honest with you. If I am to be honest, Kanye West's ingenuity, it's never, and, and I'm not here to describe him because you know I love Ye. It's never like, oh, he's the actual person that came up with it. He's usually the person bold enough to say, this is what it is. You get what I'm saying? Like, He's been someone who's, I got to word this right because I want people to be like, oh, like you're taking credit from him. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yo, y'all are trolling, okay. Y'all are trolling on the Academy page. Let me, let me go to the other page. Okay, y'all are trolling the chat over there. God damn it. Okay, I'm on the King Academics live page now. I got to work off of y'all. Somebody said, what, T-Pain? T-Pain inspired 808s on Heartbreaks? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Bro, this is Cuddy, bro. Okay, hopefully you guys don't take this wrong. Kanye West Genius is really comprised of a bunch of other geniuses that Kanye West has almost help, power, and fuel, but also, in reality, he rode off into the sunset with their creation, if that makes sense. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Do you get what I'm saying? Kanye, while he's always with, been bold with what he presents, and he's always broken the the mold of mainstream, like the mainstream fabric, we can't act like he's the one who's creating this from his mind.
No. Somebody said it was Cuddy and T-Pain working on 808s on Heartbreaks. I mean, for some of the auto-tune stuff, like, of course, I'm going to give, like, you know, Pain some credit. But I'm going to be honest with you, 808s and Heartbreak, and I'm giving it more than just the sound, but even, you know, even even some of the approach to the content. And, and, and okay. This is why it's hard to say this too, because I think that Kanye first inspired Kanye first inspired without a Kanye, you don't get a cutty. This is why, like, again, I, I know I'm arguing and I'm making a point, but I'm kind of going back on the point too. So I'm, I'm kind of feel like I'm running nowhere. So I'm running in place. I think Kid Cudi inspired a lot of the newer sounds and newer iterations of music, but without a Kanye, you don't even get a cutty. So without Kanye, you don't get a Cuddy. So if Cuddy then inspires Kanye later on, and then Kanye takes that and runs to the world with it, did Cuddy inspire all this or did Kanye? It's like chicken before the egg. Did that make sense? Like because it's very it's very easy. To, like when I'm thinking about that sound, at least when it changed, I'm telling you. It's a reason why people used to look at Cuddy, and I mean, I still think they do to a certain extent, that he was like this master at that particular like sound and like pocket. And um, we were waiting for like even more music, and that's why people were pushing the Man on the Moon and all that type of stuff. And from, from right there, I think that did help inspire Ye. And of course they work together, so there is collaboration there. But I can't say that we get a Kid Cudi if we don't have Kanye in the first place. Am I tripping? Matter of fact, you know, let me get on Discord. Let me try to talk to some of y'all about this. Uh, if anybody, if, if, if anybody um, is on Discord that I want to chat about this, uh, I'll be in my room. <laughs> I don't know if I'm tripping. If anybody has a, a decent opinion, you guys could move in and let me know. Somebody said the Cuddy hate is weird. Yeah, I, I, in hindsight, and, and this is why they said, you know, to the victor goes the spoils. Because when the tale is all said and done, the person who's most successful writes the narrative. Right? It's easy to write Cuddy out of the narrative when he's not the biggest artist in the fucking world anymore. Of course. Or, I mean, he never really was the biggest artist in the world, but he's not at the highlight or the, he's not at the, the peak and the apex of his career. How to man says, you trip and Kanye takes from everyone, but create something great with it. Like the difference between Cobra and a Mustang. Okay, how to man, good point. But that's what I'm trying to say, though. You, I agree with your point. Think of it a 20, by the way. I agree with your point. But it's like, imagine if, like, Kanye is Elon Musk, right? Is Elon Musk the motherfucker who's creating all this shit? No, motherfucker. Like, there's actual, there's, there's smart guys that he probably employs that comes up with shit. My thing is when, Someone just unilaterally just takes credit for being the only smart, innovative person without passing a ball. If you understand Kanye's career, you should know that his art has always been a product of tons of geniuses behind him. That's a fact. Whether it's 808s and Heartbreaks, whether it's motherfucking um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, whether even going back to even college dropout, late registration, graduation, there was always other geniuses behind him that helped power those ideas. Great. Maybe he was the one to execute and to bring it to market or whatever. But when you hear him in this realm where he's on some shit like, yo, it's just me. No, it's not just you. I, I, I guess maybe that's my biggest problem. He takes credit as if he's the only one. If if, if you're gonna if you're gonna take credit for Travis and Drake, I should hear Cuddy's name. I'm sorry, I should hear Cuddy's name. Cuddy was cut without Kid Cuddy. We don't get a lot of that. I'm sorry. 
Check in report. Think of the five. It says, act. Kanye kicked down the door for Cuddy. And that's what I was trying to say. I felt I'm running in place because you know the sound that we were talking about. That little emo type of wave that eventually became popular we got from The Weeknd and Drake. Say you will even that though that came from, you know, uh, um, in a way some heartbreaks. Like before that, that's Cuddy. That's Cuddy influence, right? By the way, Wally Internet, I do see you in here, so you can talk when you want. Um, that's Cuddy influence. And I want to give Cuddy some credit for being influential in that in those sounds that, that followed. Here's the thing, because you're also right, check in report, because without Kanye, we don't ever get a Cuddy. Right? Like Kanye, Kanye has the luxury of, you know. Knowing that without him, all these rappers that are emo probably would have got chased out the game. They would have all gotten chased out the game because people weren't respecting people coming in and with some soft shit. But 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 by that definition, I guess Kanye could say, well, without me, you don't get a deuce world, which technically would be true because he ushered in emo rap, right? Like Kanye literally ushered in emo rap, right? But did, did he? Did Man, he get Kanye the, just spoke the truth, and y'all want to be like he didn't. Okay. Kid Cudi a bomb. His era was over. The last time he sold good records was with Kanye. Only reason we fuck with the album because of let Kanye. Let me ask you a question then. So, so your favorite artist Wale? Are, he created Wale's lane as well too. Because You're right. It wouldn't right. be a Wale right. without Kanye, and I wanted people to say that. A lot of people was like. When it came, while it came out, he had a lot of rapping wise and ability to make music was similar to Kanye. People were surprised when he signed the MMG. They would say he should have went to good music. Okay. We wouldn't have Wale without Kanye West. I was I agree with that. Kanye is the goal. Okay. All right. And, and and I guess like you know in trying to put down this thought or like you know um, deliver this thought to to y'all listening is like I'm not saying Kanye ain't the goal. Y'all do know I I always say he is. I just talk about, you know, I think Kanye also gets, so, like, this interview was, like, so arrogant. You know what I mean? And sometimes that arrogance forgets the other people that have made his genius shine, right? Like, those great people who have penned some of those verses, who has created some of these songs, who literally brought to you everything. Because, again, when we thinking about musicians of all the great and, and, and genius shit we saying about Kanye, Kanye might have not wrote a lyric in the last five years, period. Kanye has Vori writing for him. Kanye got uh, um, um, Consequence writing for him. Kanye got everybody writing for him. You get what I'm saying? But who do we give the credit when we get a great album, which I do think the last, I do think Vultures 1 is dope. Who do we give the credit to? We don't be like, oh, these are great writers who have great ideas. No, we just say Kanye is great, right? And, and Let's I be think, honest, Todd Dolla Sign carried vultures, no, and, but yeah, he did we too. give Kanye the credit of being a genius because he's allowed to put everything together, even down to production and engineering. <laughs> Carrie says, "Yo, Ak, I know you ain't calling nobody arrogant. You think I'm arrogant?" <laughs> um. Somebody said Kanye is an actual artist. And, and I guess also I'm, uh, the reason why I'm a little shocked that he, you know, I, I feel like he almost doesn't want to share credit because I, I've always looked at Kanye as the opposite of what so many other artists do. Kanye's never cared that you knew that he had writers because for him it was always the overall product, right? Kanye was the guy who I think what made him last, like I don't want to name no particular producers, but think about a lot of producers that was running the sample era. They used to loop samples. There's mad of those guys, right? Kanye was one of the people who were like, hey, this art could be better if instead of trying to loop this like fucking sped up piano sample or whatever, how about I bring in like a trained uh, um, um, pianist or I don't even know how to say the, the word, but um, I'll have that person do a interpolation, right? And they're going to play that fucking thing I'm going to bring in an orchestra, right? This is why My Beautiful Dark Twist of Fantasy, if you ask me, was so great because it felt grand. And Kanye West, was he's one of the people who was not shy to say, hey, listen, 
Shout out to this choir. They they helped make this album. Shout out to these people. Like, just hearing him in this interview. And by the way, you know, there's other parts of this interview, too. I, I felt like he was just going crazy. Like, not going crazy, but it's just like, like, I'm going to lie to you. Did y'all see this? Kanye was telling us why he tied Jesus. I couldn't believe it. Did you see that part? Uh-uh. You ain't see that part, right? The nigga say he had beef nah. with Jesus, bro. Look. Here we go. Times you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so, in this mentality that's that's all that needs to happen but we ain't we ain't praying our way out of prison mm -hmm. we ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics we ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification after the harlem uh renaissance and black wall street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground them prayers ain't working we're going we have to apply actual physical building partnerships Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say this is what i did this is what i did man this was crazy you then there's sometimes hey, you just want to say man, spit and though. but you just want to say man this is what i'm feeling right now are you in that Bro. space where you're comfortable enough Hold on, to say this, this is back in. where i am right now i'm still a man of god I'm, jesus still is king but this is vultures right now this is where i am it is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So that was wild to me, man. <laughs> Once I seen that, I'm like, this thing can't be beefing with Jesus too, bro. He said, I got my own issues with Jesus. Like what? Hey, hey, act. He was kind of spitting, bro. Like it's to the point where, bro. You beefing with Jesus too? He was spitting at Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar would have been quiet. Bro, you beefing with Jesus too? I ain't beefing with Jesus, but he's saying, hey, us as black people, we ain't got our land back. We ain't got our black Wall Street back from gentrification and everything. Man, I I'm like this. Dr. Umar got 24 hours to respond to that. Man, he don't got to respond to that at all, man. man Dr. Umar still ain't built a school yet. Hey, We've been I, working I, on that. I, 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 I think if you're heavy into the faith, man, I think if you're heavy into the faith, you just got to realize. <laughs> Yo, Kanye's wildin', bro. Kanye, you know, I think Kanye is one of those people, you, you sure already knew he was flying close to the sun once he started, you know. And, and, and I'm always weary of any artist. Once they start using their moniker and start having, like, a pseudonym that's very close with God. Like, I, I still don't like Hove. You get what I mean? Like, Hove... Is almost like it's a shortening for Hova, which is a shortening for Jehovah, which is which Jehovah is like literally God. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I mean? Obviously, he's looking at like the God MC, but like Kanye West, once he went from um, Yeezy to Yeezus, I do think Kanye was thinking, I'm the closest thing to him. Man. I just think, I, you know. Anyway, I don't even want to get too much into, like, faith and how I think, yo, but, but just hearing him say, yo, I have my issues with Jesus, too. I'm like, nigga, if you don't shut the hell up, you better take, you better take your issues to prayer, to God. Anyway, whatever. Uh, okay, I, I do see some people, you know, kind of 
kick some knowledge, which, you know, I agree with some of y'all, you know, uh, maybe, maybe that was just me wanting him to share, to, to share that credit rather than just take for himself. But a story to tell, say, yo, bro, Drake and Kid Cudi are evolutions of what Kanye started. He made it cool for male artists to express their actual feelings instead of gun-toting, misogynistic, uh, um, perfect, what? Of previous male artists. Now, now you're right. Like, of course, th that's where the origin of those artists is. Um, and if we're going to say that origin created everything else, fuck it. You got to remember, Kanye defeated... 50 cent. Well, th th that's that's how we change the narrative. 100%. That's how we change the narrative. Okay. All right. Cool, people. All right, man. Uh, Yeah, so, you know, all right, you know, we'll, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. But I do think Kid Cudi should get some honorable mention. There's so many people, like, for example, like, if... Kanye technically could say without him, without him, you don't get, you don't get drill music, but it, it, you would be remiss to not mention Chief Keith as somebody who played a big part in drill music being here, right? Like Kanye West has originated or inspired so many things. Um, and by the way, it might be a stretch hey, of hey, the drill music. Thing. Kanye wouldn't have never jumped on don't like Chief Keith wouldn't have been as big as he was. Cap. That's cap. That's cap. But, you know, I, I, I guess that's 50 could say his music spurred drill music. And which, by the way, I remember um, before he died, God rest his soul, Fredo Santana, he actually said, yo, that came from 50. Like, yo, when he heard 50 Cent Heat, you know what I mean? And 50 Cent was like vividly almost like painting a murder scene. Like, yeah, that kind of inspired it. And by the way, you know, I was just, I was just even talking about, uh, talking to, um, I was talking to Poundside Pop, right? And and he was talking about how, like, New Age, New Day, Philadelphia rapping, where all of these young kids in Philly now, they're rapping real live shit that's going on, and it's kind of like embodying what's going on in the community. It's turning the drill music there, and he's like, he, he was straight up with it. He'd be like, yo, we learned that shit from Chicago. Like, he wasn't even trying to, like, oh, nah, we just came up. No, like, nah. We saw that shit popping over there. We said, let's get it busy here, too. What's popping? We... We do, we do what we do, right? I am. All right. Anyway, uh, let me see. Yo, did y'all see this? This is crazy. So, speaking of drill, there's a there's an artist named Didi Osama. Now, there's a streamer named Neon, and back in the day, Neon, right? I guess there was a video where he disrespected um he disrespected a deceased rapper. Now, you know, I'll be listening to some of this stuff, but I don't really be like knowing who some of these people are that, you know, happen to like pass away. And um let me let me actually just play this. So back in the day, or like actually not too long ago, Neon Neon was on like TikTok or Monkey app or whatever it was, and essentially he asked somebody about a dance called uh, supposedly the Naughty Bop. Now, usually in drill music, when you hear something that sounds like a moniker, that's somebody who passed away. Just like O Block, that's an actual person. That's O D. You know what I mean? Like Tuka is a person, even though people a lot of times commonly refer to it as you know whatever. Um. Yeah, there's people and deaths behind this. So back in the day, Neon was on like live. And again, you know, his character is like, hey, I'm this nerdy kid, blah, 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 blah. But he un understands pop culture enough. This is what happened. Yeah. Wait, wait, um, is it disrespectful Naughty Bop or no? Mm. Oh, I don't, I don't condone in those activities. I'm sorry. I don't smoke <laughs> on nobody. Yeah. Okay. One second. Don't drop my shit. Stay here. What you said? Naughty, naughty, bopping. Punch in my head. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, okay. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have to skip you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you wait, wait? No. Without getting graphic, I, and I don't know too much about the story, but apparently this dance is mocking the death 
of, I believe, the person named Nadi. Uh, like, you know, I might be messed up the name. Apparently, I believe they got stabbed to death. Am I right about that, chat? Does anybody know? So yeah. the, the way he's dancing, you see him doing a motion of, like, somebody being stabbed. And that's a dance to mock how the guy got killed. By the way, keep in mind, as is the case with a lot of drill rap anywhere, most times when you see this type of behavior, no matter even if you just like the music, we have to keep in mind that it's children dying, right? Like, and, and I don't know how old Naughty was, but I, I believe he was a teenager or something like that, right? So anyway, Neon is doing the dance that's mocking it. One question, stop, please. Stop, please, wait. One question, stop. Wait, stop. By the way, please stop. He was into it. Anyway, I don't know how true this is, but apparently Naughty, right? His brother, his Didi Osama, and tell me if I'm getting this right. I think it's his blood brother, right? Is it blood brother? I don't know. So after Neon, who mocked the death of his brother on stream by doing the dance, right? And by the way, he wasn't even done. There's more. Hey, inside info, I heard Didi Osama want to kill me. Yo, Didi Osama, you fucking training. You're not doing shit to me. Suck my dick. Suck. By the way, oh, I don't wait. agree with the word, the, the T word, no derogatory, no derogatory use or mention towards, you know what I mean, the LGBT community. Um, please. So. My dick! Oh. Yeah. Okay. So Neon then runs into D.D. Osama, the guy who he told to suck his dick. Yo, is that the camera real quick, though? Show the camera? Right. Yeah. Now I want to. I want to. I want to. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I. I want to. I want to. I want to sincerely apologize, bro. Yo, look. That's oh. all it was. That's all yeah. it is, bro. Nah. I ain't gonna front. Look. Yeah, no, I'm actually scared. Nah, you don't need to be scared. Bro. All I'm gonna tell you, baby boy, is that. Yo, baby boy. Yeah. Don't use your hands. Bro, they're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yo, I don't want nobody like. Okay, okay. Just move. Okay. Yeah. All right. My bad. Listen up. Uh huh. Respect him, bro. I know he means. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I want to Ooh, see. Listen, listen. I just want to tell you this, babe. Now, this guy here, uh, unless, unless I'm tripping, I think this guy, this guy is slow bucks. You know, you know AJ from the chat. This is like his uncle or something like that. This is this is his uncle. Okay, so th they're telling the security to back up. Which, by the way, W security never. I don't care. Listen, no. When I hire you as security, there's no private conversations. You need to be here for every conversation, okay? Uh, anyway, this is the confrontation. Here we go. Oh, they're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yo, 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 I don't yo, want yo, nobody listen, like. Yo, okay, okay. Just move. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right, my bad. Listen uh -huh. up. I know he means. Yeah. Yo, bro. Yeah. I, I, I know. I want to see. Listen, listen. I just want to tell you this, baby boy. Like, you like. You don't know where I come from. Like yeah. you, you not from the streets, baby boy. Like mm -hmm. you, you was really like, you was really a nerd, baby boy. You was really a nerd, baby boy. I'm trying to tell you, like, look, 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 I'm trying to tell you. Why you Big not? Man. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I'm just nervous, Big bro. Man. I'm sorry. Yo, Neon, yo, tell him to, tell him to go in the oh. car, bro. We're good. Tell him to go in the car. We tell good, him good. bro. We good. I'm not going to touch him. We good, bro. We good, bro. Yo, I'm not going to touch right, but him. You in look, what, do what, what I'm a game. What I'm a Yo, by the way, Neon, never let your security go in the car. What? No. <laughs> security can't secure you from the car? Game touching the I'm not gonna gain nothing. He's not. He's not. He's, he's not, not doing. gonna gain nothing. Yo, 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 listen. Go ahead. Okay. Listen. Just, yo, woo. Yo, yeah. woo. My bad. My bad. Listen. Okay. My bad. I'm. I'm. I'm nervous. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad, bro. Yo, look, bro. Basically, I'm just trying to tell you, my heart. I want. I want to. I know. You, I know what you're gonna say. And I want to sincerely apologize, bro. I didn't realize what I was saying, bro. I need you to apologize to, cause like you know, my heart, like my mom be on the gram watching. I want to. I want to apologize to her too, bro. It's not. It was not right what I did, bro. You gotta apologize to my mom, my fans, my. It's not even about that, even my heart. It's just about. It's not even in the streets to be even. I didn't. It was back in the day. I didn't realize what I was doing, bro. Yo, woo. It's not even. Yo, 
Why are you not paying attention? Sorry, to I'm, like, I'm nervous, you know bro. How I feel right now. I feel like the shit out you. I'm sorry, but bro. I'm not because what I'm a gain out of shit like you. Yeah. No, what I'm a gain from that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. Genuinely, I, I didn't mean anything. I did. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like conflicted about this. By the way, I don't agree with what Neon um, did. Also, to be very fair, I like drill music, and but even when you see me turn, like you know, I like talk facts. They mentioned like thirty people who died on that. Like I, I, I'm very careful on, like you know, once you you should know if it's somebody's name. Like you're not gonna hear me say people's name. You know what I mean? Because I'm not smoking on nobody. You get what I'm saying? And also, you get to realize that there's real hurt and pain behind it. But I do think that listen, if you meet up with with the dude and he's trying to apologize. You don't have to get that moment on camera where you're trying to punk him. You get what I'm saying? It's like, yo, like, you don't even have to tell him, like, yo, I want to slap you right now. Like, well, if that's hey, But you, you got to understand, like, a lot of people don't like Neon, and Neon kind of had to act like this right now because of, like, he pretty much got banned off with kick. Yeah, but... Yeah, and no, just no, got no, banned. Hold on, no, I'm, I'm taking it off of Neon. I'm taking it off of Neon. Because... This dude is this dude. I guess he's a, he's a Bronx drill rapper, right? Yeah. Yo, the dude is coming to you to apologize. You get what I mean? You know you're not gonna slap him. Like everything else is verbal posturing to make you look like that guy. Like yo, I'm really like that. Like I will really do something to you. No, you literally just told the security I'm not gonna do nothing to him, right? Like it's just, so again. Most of this is, is you know, I, I look at it, I'm like, if if the energy was, I want to slap you, y'all wouldn't have met up. Do you get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying he should have been nice to him. I, I, I just look at, like, you could tell that this kid just wants no problems. Did, bro. I promise I'll never have to, I'll never do any of that stuff again, bro. I'm sorry to your mom, your family, and everything, bro. And I didn't mean to disrespect you in any way, bro. I'm just trying to tell you. Now, I will say that even though I just said what I just said. From what I've seen about Neon is Neon is a stuck-in-character streamer. I don't know him off-stream. I don't know him personally. But I do believe he's playing an act. And the act is nerdy guy willing to do certain shit for viral views. I've heard he's faked his death before. I've heard he's done extreme things for people to look. So even though, you know, here I'm looking, I'm like, I hope this is not a character, right? Because if this is a character, maybe this is just all, okay, yo, it's like a funny Marco situation. Yo, right, yo, you can press me, I'm going to act scared, and we get views. But I'm hoping he's being sincere. Because I do think this guy's being sincere. Because if someone was joking about your deceased friend, you probably are upset. You get what I'm saying? Ah, uh, you sorry. You sorry. You sorry. Don't move it. Back it back. You sorry to. You gotta say sorry to my fans. You gotta say sorry to my mom. You gotta say sorry to my sister, my brothers, my my family. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like you know, like my mom really be on the claim yeah. and really be. You know, she better be seeing shit. Woo, you know yeah. that? Nah, yeah. Bro. I'm sorry, bro. I wanna apologize to everyone, bro. I didn't mean what I did, and. It takes a man, because back, back, no, because back then I wouldn't, I would even like try to troll, like not even take it serious, but like, actually, bro, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry, bro. I'm trying to be a better person, bro. I'm just trying to tell you, bro. I'm trying. <laughs> See, th this is where it gets a little awkward, where I feel like Didi Osama wants to, wants more. He wants the dude to back talk him, like he wants a little bit more than an apology. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> he wants a little bit more. I'll be a better person too, bro. That's why I ain't come here. Out you for real. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hey, is Didi Osama like, like, like a menace, like in the drill scene? He I know like, a lot of people consider he, him one of that, but it is, I know he built with Kyle Ritchie, and Kyle Ritchie got the freak Millie allegations going on right now, so Kyle Rich being quiet. Oh, he looked like K Flock a little bit. Maybe he's chasing niggas down too. Hey, Chad, is he like K Flock energy? Because I ain't going to lie to you. If, nah. given what we know about K Flock, 
if K Flock, if K Flock was like that with you in front of you saying that, nigga, I would have been like, nigga, I came here with a script to apologize. Like, nigga, I would have been scrolling like this. I'm sorry to this. I'm sorry to that. I'm sorry to this. I'm sorry to that. Like, K Flock looked like, like, K Flock looked like he would have gave you a Legos. Bruh, Didi Osama is pretty much like the East Coast version of a brick baby. Really? Oh, he like that then. Yo, 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 K Flock. Yo, first of all, I ain't gonna lie to you. If it was K Flock, I think K Flock would have just went live and chased this nigga around the block, bro. Like, you know how many times y'all used to watch, bro, watching K Flock on Instagram used to be like watching the Negro Olympics, the Hood Olympics, bro. Bro, that nigga was doing hurdles, pole vault. That nigga was doing long jumps. That nigga was doing triathlons. That nigga did a marathon. Nigga, I seen K Flock run for 20 minutes chasing the op. I'm like, damn, this nigga ain't walked yet. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, I've never seen a nigga. Yo, I've never seen a nigga more diligent at chasing ops ever. I'm watching, I'm like, yo, this nigga been running 20 minutes at yo. I seen K Flock run after the op. I think the nigga was in a car. K Flock is on foot. Slow down. Come on. <laughs> Yo, I'm serious. Yo, K Flock's a legend. <laughs> K Flock's a legend. I kid you not. I've never, bruh. Yo, I seen K Flock chase a op and was begging the nigga to come in. Like, pause, 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 pause. Like, that sounds crazy. He was begging the nigga to be in his blunt. He's like, just come be a pack. Come on. No, just stop. Just stop running. Please be a pack today. Please, please. I'm like, yo, yo, what's up? What's up with this guy? Yo, <laughs> yo, I think we played some of them videos. Okay, I'm not even going to get into We got to finish with this. Okay. So, so he's not really, so, so you're saying he's not really like K Flop, but he's like, he's like the Brick Baby, but Brick Baby's like the aficionado, though. What, wait, what gang does, what gang does uh, Didi Osama claim? What gang is he? Oh no, I know they I know Fats be talking to them dudes. Um Oh, he's a OY? OY, okay. Wait, K Flock was an OY, right? Nigga, like, I don't know, bro. Right? Anyway, let's keep hearing this press. Try to tell you you not from the street, so like I, I shouldn't even try to involve myself in stuff yeah, like that. It's like, my fault. Don't ever in your life Ooh. do some shit like that because you don't know what comes behind that. Yeah. You don't know what comes behind that. I'm saying. Yeah. You don't, baby boy. Like, I'm trying, I don't. Yeah. Like, no, I don't. I'm really trying to tell you, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Neon did wild out with that dance. That dance look crazy. Yeah. Niggas like like niggas really wanted you dead for that. Yeah. Oh shit. Damn. Yo, it got to be a crazy feeling if if you're looking at the nigga who basically, if this wasn't a stream and there wasn't other people on his side who set this up and security on his side, yo, he would have killed him. Damn. Hey, what would you would have did different if you was in that situation? If, if I was who? Neon. If I was Neon? um, and If I'm Neon, this is what I wanted. Because to me, Neon's playing a character. And the character is nerd kid gets confronted by super gangster. And it's supposed to, as long as he doesn't hit you, like you don't want him to hit you, but it's supposed to look like you were about to die, right? You know what I mean? Like that's going to make the views go up. Like if the dude was like, man, you a goofy, man. Like, man, I know you don't mean that shit. Just dapped him up and be like, bro, just say sorry to my peoples. Like, that wouldn't work. You, there got to be an element of fear. So if I'm Neon, this is the best result, to be honest, right? Just going viral and keep one in my... Can't get saying, oh, f***ing Didi Osama. I yeah, don't care. Nah, it was not, it wasn't you know right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah. I think... I mean, I don't know if you want to like, be cool, bro, but I, ooh, I, I, ooh, I'm... Ooh. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, woo. Wait, he call him woo? Involve yourself in street politics if you know Why he call him woo? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Don't do that, bro. Yo, that's my favorite new um um that's my favorite new um that's my favorite new New York slang, my heart. 
Yo, chat, imagine <laughs> a nigga, a nigga about to tell you like, yo, I would have smoked you, my heart. Yo, you would have been in my blunt, my heart. You would have been a backward. You would have been in the backward, my heart. Baby boy, my heart. Baby boy, my heart. Like, you would have been in my blunt. You would have been a pack. New York got the best slang of all time. Demi God Pena says, he's not brick baby of New York City. Laughing my ass off. Didi Osama, one of the softest drill rappers to come out of New York. His brother is D Dot. It's more of a crash out. Wale is a dick eater. Bro, Brick Baby Solve. Nah, nah, Brick what Baby. What you mean? Solve. Nah, Brick, Brick Baby about to shoot up the no jumper office. <laughs> come Friday, nigga. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, nigga. I'm about to send a drone over there to the watch. Man, man, yo, Flacco don't even believe that. No, no. Brick Baby manhood been taken in that building. He gotta slap somebody or a fade gotta get caught. I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, okay, so, so they're saying Didi Osama isn't like that. I don't know if that's that's true, people. Look like look like he's kind of a, a little mini demon. Wait, is Sugar Hill D dot? Is that his brother? It's like the OY Sugar Hill game. It's like the Harlem original youngins. Okay. Chat, without getting boring and shit, we like to get... Uh, look at this nigga, man. Hey, we're calling the governor tomorrow, man. No more fake thugging. Hey, yo, act. I had this one chick hit me up. Her name is um, Batty BK. Meat Mill took her song. Everybody gonna say that, though. Hold on. Um, nah, bro. Spade TV official posted it, too. So nah, it was like her actual song. New Hours, like she said, like, yo, Meat took her shit. Oh, okay, okay. All right, um, well, we look at we look at that in a little bit. Let me see. I want to watch a doc. Let's watch the documentary on on Naughty Bob or no, I mean Naughty uh Naughty Osama. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Um, the dude on uh, Chat Bender. He made a video on it. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try to speed through. I'm gonna just watch this one that popped up first. My bad, Bender. Police say the brawling team then ran into this nearby okay. subway station and it ended in bloodshed on the platform of the northbound number one subway. Oh, I heard the story. They basically chased down a young kid and stabbed him to death. What the hell? They train. And I see the kid bleeding. Bleeding from the, from the side of the waist. And then when he fell, then the police was coming downstairs. They grabbed him and ran with him inside the ambulance to try to save his life. They, he did a great job, but... I think it was too late. The Manhattan DA's office has now identified year-old Kelvin Martinez as the person suspected of stabbing Reyes and say the two are part of rival gangs. Oh, okay. Wait, is, is this this is Didi Osama right here, right? Is this is this the is this is this Naughty Osama right here? And this is them together? Oh shit. Yo, Chad, this, this is the only part about drill music that turns you off a little bit. Bro, like, you hear a song and sonically it sounds crazy and it's like, oh, damn, this sounds like some tough guy shit. And then you realize they're clowning the death. But this is like a little, little child right here, bro. You know what I mean? Now, granted, I say that still acknowledging some of these little childs or children, they're killing niggas too. You know what I'm saying? July 9th, 2022, an upcoming rapper by the name of Ethan Reyes, aka Nadi Osama, was with his brother, Didi Osama. But that day wasn't simply a regular time spent together. It would be the very last time they would see each other alive, for Nadi Osama would lose his life moments later. It was after midday. The clock was ticking after 2 p.m. Nadi Osama and Didi Osama parted ways, thinking that just like any other day, they'd be reunited after going about their individual business. But soon, that reality was shattered to pieces. Just before 3 p.m., Nadi Osama and two friends were walking at 137th Street and Broadway when they came across someone by the name of Kelvin Martinez, who was on his way into the train station to catch an uptown train. According to reports... Yeah, that's the fucked up thing about New York. Imagine getting killed by a nigga with a Metro Pass, man. Like, what the fuck? 
that nigga who jump in the turnstile, he's he, he don't got enough money for, for for change for the subway, but he got a knife in his pocket or a gun. Like this is a fucked up thing about New York, man. A, a nigga with beat up Nikes and a dirty t shirt like, come on, man. That's I'm telling you, New York's a fucked up place, bro. What lit the match about the events, which were about to erupt, was a gang feud between Nadi Osama's affiliation and those of Martinez. The tensions were escalating over recent weeks, and it was at a boiling point. With Nadi spotting his rival, it was almost inevitable what would happen next. It's sad that at just such a young age, this was the agenda on their minds. But the streets of New York, in particular Sugar Hill, which is the gang faction Nadi represents, molded him into what he became. A sad reality, but a reality that exists and erodes the minds of the youth. The Sugar Hill set falls under the affiliation of the OIs, also known as the original Young Gangsters, and also the alias, the original Youngins. Growing up in the environment of gangs and the lifestyle, it's not surprising Nadi Osama's first reaction was one inspired by injuring or even worse, taking the life of his rival, Martinez. Now he has a mindset to do harm, and he also got hold of the broomstick as his weapon which checks off the box for an altercation waiting to happen. Nadi Osama and his friends first got into a heated verbal confrontation with Martinez outside of the subway station before things went south and they proceeded to chase Martinez into the station where they cornered him at the north end of the platform. Police say the fight between the teenagers started here on the street close to this park at 138th Street and Broadway at 3 p.m. Saturday. Police say the brawling teens then ran into this nearby subway station. With nowhere left for Martinez to escape, Nadi Osama and his friends began carrying out the beating they envisioned in their minds, but they failed to factor in the possibility of resistance. And that was the second grave mistake Nadi Osama made other than engaging in the act in the first place. Martinez was armed, and he drew his knife in retaliation to the beating he was receiving, a natural reaction in a fight or flight moment. He would swing at Reyes, aka Nadi Osama, puncturing him in the abdomen. It was then one of Nadi Osama's friends is reported to have swung a sharp object at Martinez, which gave Reyes, aka Nadi Osama, the time he needed to push Martinez onto the train tracks, causing him to fall on his back. Martinez, seeing the distance from the fall as a way to get out of the situation, climbed up and fled the station, leaving a bloody Nadi Osama staggering down the platform before collapsing on the staircase. Police officers would receive a call about the stabbing just after 3 p.m prompting a swift response to the subway station to find a wounded Nahadi Osama on a northbound one train platform. He would be rushed to the Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital, where he, unfortunately, succumbed to his injuries. Police say they got the call just after 3 o'clock, and when they got here, they discovered the 14-year-old... How many times would he stab? Would he stab once? ...old boy stabbed in the abdomen on the northbound one train platform. They say he was rushed to Mount Sinai St. Luke's, but unfortunately, it was too late. The stab wound did fatal damage upon piercing into his abdomen, puncturing his liver, dooming the young teenager to a life cut short due to the gang pitting the young against each other. The police presence was immense, given the location of the hit and the busy surroundings, not to mention it was basically broad daylight. The crime scene was cornered off, but that didn't stop concerned citizens from swarming to the location of the altercation. A press conference was held by law enforcement in quick succession to inform the public of their findings to try and erase the fear of the suspect being on the loose. NYPD Transit Chief Jason Wilcox would state that they have surveillance footage that shows the incident clearly and the suspect description is known and being searched for. MTA camera footage from that station provided clear images of individuals who were present at the time of the incident. Officers immediately began their search for the suspect and one officer noticed something that fitted the description of Martinez on West 173rd Street in Broadway. With the assistance of Martinez's mother, officers were able to arrest him without any altercation. It was there they were better able to examine Martinez, but they found he had suffered injuries to his back and two puncture wounds to his left hip. He was treated at the hospital and also interviewed by NYPD detectives and DA investigators. That individual was stopped and taken into custody. At the time, he was- what, what happened to um, the guy who killed him then? Bleeding from his back and abdomen and brought to an area hospital to be treated for wounds to his left hip area. Two weapons, a knife and a broomstick wielded in the altercation, was found by law enforcement and seized as evidence for the case. Martinez was charged for the hit and criminal possession of a weapon. Good evening, Jessica. That year old suspect is being charged with and criminal possession of a weapon. New York City Mayor Eric Adams was coincidentally in the area 
promoting an event promoting public safety for children and teens when he caught wind of the tragedy that occurred. After which, he shared his thoughts to news reporters on the scene. New York City Mayor Eric Adams was briefed on the crime while incidentally attending an event promoting public safety for children and teens. And so being here today uh, and hearing about the stabbing really highlights why we need the lights on in schools like this so our children can have a safe face. He would then take to Twitter to try highlighting the situation, plaguing the streets of New York along with his meeting with the community to aid in finding a solution to the bloodshed. Didi Osama, Nadi Osama's brother, would be devastated by his brother's passing and couldn't help but place the blame on himself for not being there to change the outcome. Let's go to the block. It's calling me saying, Nadi got stabbed. Block. I said, what? My brother was just with him. Yeah. Like, that's why I was sad. Like, bro, shit, still thinking, like, what if I stayed? Like, if I was really, if I just stayed with him all the time, he'll really be here today. No cap. Word. They were finally gaining traction in the music industry, making a name for themselves in the next rappers up from the Bronx. The fame was right there, but the money and all that came with it meant nothing now that his brother was gone. I ain't supposed to be able to grow. Even at his young age. Like this. Don't don't drop my shit. Not, not even bopping. Punching my hips. Like, come here, gotta do it like this. From the Holy shit. Okay, all right. Anyway, I guess we, now we know who not oh, is. Hey, hey, I'm trying to figure out what they did with the broomstick. I guess he was using a broomstick to try to like hit people, like to keep the guys away from him, and somebody got close to him and stabbed him. Right? I don't know, bro. Now you're right. Like, for real. I'm, I'm, like, done, I'm you, done doing it too, bro. You, like, yo, I'm just trying to tell you, well, I told you what I told you then. You mention my brother one more time. I won't. Yeah, my bro, word. Bro. On my life, I'll never I'm do not, it, bro. I'm not even I know going. it. Bro, bro, really, the main thing was just this little bro, like, you feel me? Like, I told to him, like, that's I my, like, my dad, little brother, my heart. Like, I got my son in the back of my chain, my heart. Nah, you understand that? I, I shouldn't have played about that. Like, you understand that, my heart? Yeah. Y'all yeah, can tell. He tight. Yeah, and he should be. I understand that. I don't, I don't, I don't think you understand that. No, I, I, get, I, get, I get it, bro. I get it. You don't get it because you wouldn't ever did it in the beginning. I didn't realize back then, bro. Because I didn't realize you what did, I was doing. You did because, like, it was my brother that died. You say it, he died and it was a dance made of his death. So, like, you obviously knew what the Naughty Mop was, folks. You obviously knew what was that. So, like, you still did it. Yeah. Disrespect the Wu. I'm just trying to tell you, bro. You're not a street, bro. Mm -hmm. Don't involve yourself in street politics. Stop. Stop doing that. They gonna backfire on you. I'm trying to tell you. I appreciate you for looking out too, bro. I, I, even after the shit I said, bro. No, just only thing, like, bro, y'all niggas is both still young, coming up. Like, he a young, you know what I'm saying? Young rapper, you young, doing what you doing. I'm gonna make a point that I, I don't really think holds much water, but I, I'll make the point just to try to play devil's advocate in the situation. Is there any blame that these guys should take for? making music clowning other people's deceased relatives is it on the fans to know that these songs and these song uh, and these dances are really hurtful because th these guys are popping off because of drill music it's not like they're popping off because of gospel right these guys no are they sensitive as fuck and the streets is dead the streets is a mill well, 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 well here's the thing they're popping off because of songs dissing other people. And other people are popping off for songs dissing them and their dead relatives. The fans are the ones that... This guy doesn't have a chain if people don't like his music. This guy doesn't have a career if people doesn't like his music. P part of his career is dissing... I don't know if he disses the dead like everybody else, but um, part of his career is making this type of content... Neon is by, you know, he's like, he's a fan, right? He's a fan. It's like making a diss song. You know what I mean? Like, if you play, obviously, I know this isn't as deep as compared to, you know, obviously this guy's brother's dying. But, it's like, if you play back-to-back, -back, is Meek Mill supposed to be like, oh, man, yo, what? No, nigga, your, your problem is with the nigga who made it, Drake. So is one of those is it one of those situations where maybe Didi Osama should be upset at other gang members who are taunting him like that and other gang members who are rapping about his brother and making it to a dance rather than the fan who you're you're right they're 
on the sidewalk. They're not in the streets, but they are consumers of this art. You can't get mad at fans when you need them to survive for a career. Do you get what I'm saying? No, you're right. That's why the streets is dead because they want to play this double standards. Because whenever they make their song this and the other ops, they want you to go scream it. They want you to go sing it. They want you to do all this stuff. But True it's because Wally, them, but for every action, it's a reaction. Hmm. Yeah. So they shouldn't get mad. They know he ain't no street nigga. Okay. All right. And I think this is how it ends right here, chat. Bro, like, just as far as, like, just knowing, bro, like, that shit still, that shit, that shit hurts. So it's like yeah. you come, you looking at it, it's like, just, oh, it's a joke. No, it's, it's deep in that. I got that, yeah. Brother, you feel me? So it's just like, if y'all going, that it, he said he got his, he explained to himself. Well, I'm not, the only up, reason why me? I'm really not doing nothing to you, because you dead, there's nothing to do to you, because like, there's nothing to gain. Can't, like, it, nothing it can't be, y'all end it right here, and then yeah. you go back and do something. Exactly. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, bro, I'm done. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can shake his hand as a man, y'all ended it, but it's just no more jokes with that shit. Nah, my bad, bro. I appreciate your apology as a man, woo. Yes, sir. Yeah, woo, but, like, on some real shit, don't involve yourself with this shit. If you not a street, woo, I'm trying to tell you, there's a lot of that comes with this shit. Yeah. That's good. You're educated. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, nah, I'm, uh, yeah, nah. I, I just shooting you. It goes for like kids, period, just doing shit like this. Bro, this is good what y'all doing I right really now. I hope you understand. I do. Not, I promise. You, you'll see it too, bro. I promise I you, I do, bro. You do, bro. I do, I do, I do. I generally do, bro. Yeah, bro, I'm, I got, bro. I got no problems with you. Only reason why, because you like on, like, so crazy for the neck just to yeah. go viral. That's little, vi you you're just trying to go viral, woo. I understand. You just want to go, you just want to talk with shit. I understand that. It's not, it's, shit, I, I, I don't think woo, when I talk, bro. Woo, woo. Yeah, yeah. Start doing that. Start, start thinking when you before you talk too. Yeah. Start doing that, because I used to not do that. Start doing that, bro. Well, I'm telling you, bro. I told you what I told you, bro. And I, I just, like, bro, don't stop involving yourself. You know what I told you. I just wanted to clear, bro, and, and genuinely apologize to your face, because I, I said like all this on stream, like, but I want to really tell you, like, man to man, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, a lot of people want, a lot of people won't even have really did that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So we respect that. But like, this is a man, you a man, and he's teaching you something, and he's y'all both teaching each other something, because. Yo, this nigga look at it. <laughs> this yo, this this is why I'm like, yo, this is where it gets a little awkward because okay, yo, you met up with the guy, he's apologizing. Number one, I, I, it would be fine if you didn't even want want an apology from him. But the energy and vibes is like, yo, I should just slap you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And by the way, it works with Neon because this is Neon's character, but hey. He's a reactor, hey. right? So now, hey, yo, act, you know what I would have said? Well, man, I would have told him, man, instead of getting mad at me, keep that energy with Kyle Rich and 41 in him. That's what you need to be mad at. Me, I'm not gonna try nothing like that. And then, and then he gonna really slap you. <laughs> and then he gonna slap you and said, I right, bet. Go tell them. That's what I'm gonna do when I see them. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gonna do worse than slap him. <laughs> Oh man, well, where's this part where he's like, "Yo, apologize to my mama." Here we go. Yeah, it's big for you, person. Like I never seen somebody in your field pull up, and I never seen somebody in his field react like this yeah. on some biggest and like kids is watching and showing them like you can resolve stuff like men. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Well, I'm just trying to tell you, well, you know the vibes, bro. Just don't, don't match my brother again, mm -hmm. and like. You no, know, bro, good, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm about, I got nothing to gain. I got nothing to gain from touching you. Yeah. Nothing. DD just nah, dropped some fire. Nothing. Now you know what's going on. Yeah, you want to say some shit on the. Get my man DD shit nothing going crazy. Now. I'm good. They're going to see They gonna see me turn mm -hmm. up. They're going to see me turn up. Yeah. But I'm telling you, woo. Don't involve yourself in none of that shit politics, bro. You're not a shit. Yeah, nah, I, I don't want to get involved in any of that shit, bro. I know, I'm a civilian, bro. Really, I know you are. Yeah. You don't, bro. You don't, woo. You don't, bro. Because, like, bro, I'm not. I'm not I get, no, I get, I get everything. Understand. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. I, I promise, bro. I do get it. I just want, this is one of the beefs I want, I want to clear, bro. For your apology. Mm -hmm. You go apologize to my mom. I apologize. What, you say, you say I'm, I'm sorry, Mama Osama. I'm sorry, Mama Osama. I say, I'm sorry, Didi brother. I'm sorry, Didi's brother. I say, I'm sorry, Didi's sister. I'm sorry, Didi's sister. I say, I'm sorry, Didi uncle. I'm sorry, Didi's uncle. I say, I'm sorry, Didi's aunt. I'm sorry, Didi's aunt. Say, I'm sorry. Yo, the reason why this is funny, I promise you, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like after a while. Didi Osama was creating new relatives for this nigga to apologize. Sorry, Didi's family. I'm sorry, Didi's family. I love you, man. Love you too, brother. Okay. That's there right there. That's there. Yes, sir. God bless. Go. Okay. Good.
Yeah, no, my bad. I'm, I, I'm just nervous, bro. I've never been in like situations like this. I, I've never like, bro. I, I want you to take a picture of all of like the young dude. Cause they pull up. I he. I don't know. You you mind taking a picture of everybody? Of course, no, of course. Demographic. I come from a certain place. Like. Okay. All right. Good vibes though. At least overall, I, th I think it worked for it worked for Neon. Um, Neon's persona th that could th that that could happen. You get what I'm saying? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Holy shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. So sexy red recently spoke, and, and I, I guess like you know. Whether you didn't know it or not, you could tell. And this, I was saying how smart, sexy Red is. Like, bro, she played along to a internet rumor or the internet saying, oh, you fucked Aiden, right? And um, she tried to flip it. She was like, well, yeah, I fucked him, but I nigga paid. And, you know, I, I think she was a good sport about it because she could have just instantly got mad, like, why niggas lying on they dick? And I think that would have, you know, in, in the world of streamers, a streamer would be like, bro, I was just joking, I was trolling, like, you're in your feelings, right? So I think she handled it really well, but I think it got to the point where now she did want to clarify, I did not have sex with this guy. And um, she did an interview with uh, Bootleg Kev at Rolling Loud, and this is what she said. I'm gonna ask you, you and Aiden Ross had an interesting exchange this week. Any, what, what's, is, is this all cap? Is this a stunt? It was, a, I don't know why he played like that, but he felt the need to want to come on the internet and play with me, but I'm just like, let me play along with him. Let me just- so He's full of shit, is this? He's full of shit. Okay. Fair. I thought that was smart, though. Really smart. Fair enough. I gotta ask you, you and Aiden Ross had a- Interest. Okay, then Aiden Ross actually did respond to that, which you know, salute to all my guys who run um, you know, my streamer page. Uh, what? Where did he respond? Where did he respond? He responded da, 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 right here. Aiden Ross had an interesting exchange this week. Any? What, what's? Is, is this all cap? Dude, yes, it's cap, bro. She better say it's cap too because I think her and I were just playing along. Chat. It got really weird because they were trying to say that she agreed. Douchin. It was not no fucking. Problem. I ain't gonna lie. Things blew out of proportion. Me and Red have never had. Sex. Is this a stunt? It was. A, I don't know why he played like that, but he felt the need to want to come on the internet and play with me. But I'm just like, let me play along Facts. with him. Let me just. So he's full of shit. Is this? Full of shit. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, Chad. Like, see, like, I, I don't want like her saying like she doesn't do a problem. Shit's cap. Aiden Ross. Hey. That's another. That's another reason I think sexy Red. I don't care how she looks. She does look very flamboyant. She looked like someone you wouldn't think to be that savvy with certain things. And she's a new artist. And when I mean savvy, like, you know, savvy with how people go viral or how people might say certain shit, but it's not exactly what happened. And it showed me that she's really like, this is one of the reasons she has succeeded because whether it's people saying that Drake got her pregnant and Drake's her baby daddy, whether it's her laughing at, did you see this video of her performing at um Rolling Loud and, you know, people kind of laughing at her like, yo, damn, that's how she sounds. She could have like really been in her feelings. You know what she does? Bro, she, she, yo, she, yo, she, she'll just kind of embrace it. This was the video that went viral. <laughs> And that's her, I believe, trying to sing Scissors part on uh uh what is it, Rich Baby Daddy, uh with Drake and and her on it. So her, Drake, and, and um SZA. She was just trying to do the singing part. Of course, it sounded horrible because she's not a singer. And you know, everybody was clowning it. Again, what what where she's really good at, she don't get in her feelings and hasn't looked stupid online, right? Let me see. What's her what's her sexy? Here we go. She has to look stupid online. Look. I, I'll tell you where she, like, quote tweeted at. She quote tweeted the performance. And she was, like, mad, like, you know, nonchalant and, like, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Da, da, da. She also got brought, on, brought out on stage by Chief Keith. But let me see if I can find her retweeting that viral non-singing moment here we go uh, can i find it damn she tweets a lot you know 
Oh, here we go. I think she's about to do it in a second. Oh, she actually retweeted me. She said, sounds fine to me. Which, by the way, hey, hey, Meek, I'm giving you another tip. I keep telling y'all, she don't run that Twitter. Somebody smart is on there, and they don't have outburst. They don't have, oh, I got to show you I'm the realest nigga. I think she had tweeted directly at it and, and just be like, yo, that's how people sound, sound in the sh shower type shit. You know what I mean? Like, she's not, like, fucking shying away from it and be like, oh, whatever, whatever. Like, bro, she kind of, like, owns all of this shit. And I think people kind of fuck with her even more because they're like, oh, she's just being herself. She doesn't seem bothered. She gets it. She knows that everybody, like, somebody got to be the butt of the joke. Sometimes it's her. Sometimes it's somebody else. It is what it is. Anyway, she had, she had another tweet. I can't find it at the moment. But she had quote tweeted it and be like, yo, this is how a lot of y'all be sounding in the shower. Right? I, I might have it on here. But she was like, this is how a lot of y'all motherfuckers be sounding in the shower. Anyway, it's all good. Um... I'm I'm glad she, I'm glad how she's dealing with a lot of these things said about her because it's easy for her to get sensitive. People have her as this caricature of this really ratchet black woman, and they make all of this you know assumptions about her, whether true or not. And the easiest thing to go viral is an assumption about her or trying to laugh at her about something, and she could be tight about a lot of shit. Instead, she let it roll off her shoulder. She used it to keep promoting it. Or she drops a song that's kind of like fucking playing off of it. I think that's fucking smart. Congratulations to her. You know, I've always told you I, I, I like her because of her authenticity. You know, if she comes off authentic, why, would I, why the fuck would I not want to, you know? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Let me see. 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 Uh... <laughs> Did y'all hear Amber Rose saying that she deserved twenty million for helping Kanye West with my beautiful dark twisted fantasy? Hit us. Okay, so so anyway, so you didn't get any credit or no points on the Nicki Monster thing. I don't think so. Could have no. got something. You should have got something. I should have got twenty million dollars for my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, but I didn't get nothing. I should have got money for the wax figure that didn't get nothing. I didn't get any money from anything. Like I should have. I, I you know I I should have been compensated in some way for using my likeness in, in so many songs and the wax figure. I had a guy come up to me like, I, I, I was one of the people that created the wax figure of you. And I'm like, no one hit me up and said, is this okay? Can we pay you to use your likeness? Nothing. Like that, I mean, that is pretty up. And yet you still give grace though. I give grace for my mental health, mm -hmm. not for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so anyway, so you didn't get any credit or no points on the Nicki Monster thing. I don't think so. Could have no. got something. You should have got something. I should have got twenty million dollars for my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, but I didn't get nothing. I should have got money for the wax figure that didn't get nothing. I didn't get any money from anything. Okay, uh, respectfully to Amber Rose, you should have got nothing. Uh, I I think what Kanye West did by you dating him and him showing you off. And yes, he did use you as a muse um, of inspiration to create one of the greatest albums of all time. But such is life and the experiences of life that art derives from, right? You know, art is a reflection of said things, which is whether whether he went through a positive or a negative experience with you or whether he went through a breakup with Kim to create the life of Pablo or whether he, like, it, it's, you know, or went through little difficult moments. Um, I think him and Kim was doing good at Life of Pablo. I think it was afterwards, you know, or, or even Donda. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, you're not. Oh shit! I think you getting a career. That's what was good about it. He was not shy about showing the person off that was inspiring his mindset, his mood, making him, you know, a better person at that time, or making him happy. You got a whole career out of it. What more do you need? You know, I th like uh, <laughs> you, you got to read some of these comments. People are so mean. Somebody say, yo, bro, 20 mil for giving bro slop in the studio. Somebody said, I know a Kanye West laughing at his phone right now. I agree. Somebody said she got confused, uh, compensated by being introduced to the world. I agree with that, too. Somebody said he made her famous. I forgot. Yeah, I made I been famous. What's the problem? He said I must have missed her verse or something. Hey. Shorty, he wasn't with him shooting in the gym. Do you get what I mean? Um, 
Somebody's like, yo, Yeah, gonna use this as a soundbite. Shit, he might. This time she'll actually get credit and might get a paycheck. Not 20 million though, okay? Somebody said, Shorty got fame, relevance, opportunity to be in rooms where she could get 18 years of child support from Wiz, all because of yeah. Yeah. She doesn't meet, which this is why I see why Kanye be talking so crazy. You don't even meet anyone else, or you don't even meet, uh, let me not say Wiz necessarily, because I know they have a child and I want to be disrespectful, but it, it's possible that she doesn't get to be in long-term relationships with other rappers if Ye doesn't make that acceptable and cool first. Let's be honest. You get what I'm saying? Somebody said, lady, if the funds are running low, let's say that. Now, I don't know if that's the case, and I'm hoping that's not the case. I will say, though, Amber Rose, to me, is one of the biggest bag fumblers of all time, and I say that respectfully, and I'm going to tell you why I think that. There is a moment where they used to compare they used to compare um, Amber Rose and Black China as the black version of the Kardashians. And we all thought, by the way, we used to see, you know, back then, you know, we would see like these contrasts and we saw their social media following. They were one of the, the, the first women with like huge social media following. But it clearly was not for what they do because they don't do shit. But people just love them based on their relationships they've been in, like their experiences, and also what they represent as women. I think that they fumbled the bag. That's just flat out, you know, and I'm not saying they had to go the same route as the Kardashians to get like a, a reality show or whatever the case is, because maybe they want to put their life out there like that. But let's be very clear, with all that clout that they had, and I don't know if y'all remember that, there was a time where, you know, I remember she was arguing with like Khloe Kardashian or something like that, and flaming Khloe up. And everybody was just on her side like, yo, yo, we love you. Like, you're the woman. And, um, bro, I don't know how they fumbled it like that, bro. No product came out of it. Nothing that was really marketable to sell. Her biggest thing was a slut walk. And great, yes, in her mind, she empowered a lot of women. But what long lasting legacy at least in you know entertainment did you create she didn't in my opinion okay she didn't create anything they fumbled the ball like i'm gonna be honest with you i'm shocked like she was just on a show like bt college hill bt college hill amber rose like she was on there i think like fighting and i'm gonna be honest with you like Think about it. Could you ever What's see, going? like, obviously we have seen, like, the Kardashians fight, right? But it's, like, sister fights. Could you imagine, like, Kim K fighting, like, some random other celebrity on, like, some random show that they don't own? The Kardashians, they're on a show. They be on Hulu fighting for 100 million because they own the show and they get no look. look let's see if we could What's see going this. on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBC Pulse and the host of HBC Pulse Radio. Is there any videos? Amber Rose College Hill. Yeah, I think it's right here. You want to go there? Let me tell you. There she go. Quiet, baby, quiet, baby, quiet, baby. Crazy. Anyway. I think she fumbled the the, the, the bag, and, and and again, I just don't believe that. Uh, if she believes that she's deserving twenty million, what does Britney Bird? What does Britney Bird deserve for Uzi? Like everybody knows, everybody knows, this was it right here. Let's be honest. Like if we start saying that the women that were essentially muses, right? They're owed for them either inspiring great music, like <laughs> you know who would come out come out of the blue and you know, bring up some new some some other names. You know who come out the blue? Whoever A Boogie's ex was was gotta come out the blue. Cause A Boogie was making them songs after he broke up with her or she broke his heart. You know what I mean? A Boogie Jungle, like yo, whatever chick had him in this bag she deserve a check too, right? Think about it. If we just giving out a check on, uh, oh yeah, I inspired some shit. Man, there's a couple chicks out here that is deserving of some shit. 
Give me some more examples, people. Women who have inspired great product. <laughs> Somebody said, act Angelica want to check. For what? What she inspire? <laughs> Somebody said, Ali Lottie and Juice. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Ali Lottie going out so, so sad, bro. She going out so, so sad, bro. Oh, no. Yo, out of respect for Juice World, bro, I can't even open this next DM. Hold on, I'm going to show you, the, the like, the bottom. Bro, this, it, look, Ali Lai, my DMs, bro. Look, out of respect for Juice, I can't even open it, bro. Look, can I see fuck? Come on, man. What the fuck? Oh, shit. oh, I did open it. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, I just clicked my message. It's no, no, I'll read it. It says it's Ali's manager. Do you sell post on IG or Twitter? If so, what's your number? Ah, no, nigga. Hell no, y'all can't have. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Juice Row would backflip out of his casket and slap the shit out of me, nigga. Nigga, did, did you just sell a promo post of my dreads? Fuck is you doing that, bro? That's not. Nah, I, I can't, bro. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. So I guess her manager's running her account, but they're they're trying to buy a promo on everybody. Matter of fact, me talking about it, I feel like I'm giving her a promo, so I, I should just stop. But then I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Nigga, when I see that, bro, it, it, it just saddens me because I'm like, yo, I know she's made her money already, bro. Like, bro, remember when I had that whole idea when I say, yo, I do feel Juice World's family should have broke off her a little bit, like a piece to be like, yo, you were a woman in his life. Don't embarrass him. Take this little money right here and just sail off into the sunset don't embarrass him you're juice world's girlfriend publicly for life just don't embarrass him don't be over here like doing but, but, but she can't help it bro she can't help it bro she can't help him she can't help. oh somebody says xxx tentacion's ex geneva yeah i think she deserve a check too yeah yeah she probably would yeah she probably would deserve a check i ain't gonna lie to you Somebody said J.R. Smith and K. Michelle. What? K. Michelle songs is about J.R. Smith? I ain't gonna lie. Tahiri would deserve a check for, from Joe Budden, right? <laughs> Who was Marvin's room about? That was about no goddamn Rihanna. Oh, yeah. Thug and Jerka Carly? Yeah, Jerka Carly definitely deserve a check, man. If we giving out checks on muses. Trippy Red and Coyle Ray. No, nigga, you mean Alex, right? But didn't, didn't Trippy just get back with Alex, though? Didn't they get back with each other? Let's, let's try to find that. Uh, uh, what count is this? <laughs> Alex. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Is that trippy? No, it ain't trippy. <laughs> Her and Trippy was chilling recently. Alex Trippy Red. They were definitely chilling recently. They spent New Year's Eve together, right? And that was always um, what it is. There always room for improvement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Even though I still can't, I still can't forgive her for for Alex six nine. This was why. This was why right here. This was why. Right <laughs> nah, this was why. Nah, this was why right here. No way she was singing a song with in this biggest op talking about please don't go switch inside, switch inside. Oh my god. What the fuck? No, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm only putting, I'm putting shit on 2X that we don't get struck because it, it, there's music in here. Damn. Looked like she was trying to kiss that nigga too. <laughs> nah, this was devious right here. I ain't gonna lie to you. This was devious. Yo, this was devious, nigga. I swear this was devious. I swear this is devious. There you go. This is that crazy. Niggas is that same fuck six nine. Yo, babe, look at this shit. <laughs> it is fuck six nine. It's fuck you, Treyway. <laughs> you right, babe. It's a fucking vibes. <laughs> nah, this is why. Nah, this is why. Nah, this is why. <laughs> this is why. All right, basically, yo, y'all ex girlfriends, man. A lot of times, y'all left these situations with a lot of fame, especially if y'all cloud chase, like for example, Alex did. Um, Amber, like that nigga, put you on the biggest stage. It's not like he kept you hidden, whatever, whatever. No, nigga. We all know you. I think your know, fair trade is, uh, is no robbery. You get you get a, a life of fame and exposure, something that you could use to fucking monetize in whatever way. I'm not saying you should monetize some whole shit, but you can monetize. Like these days, women want to support the girlfriend more than they want to support the rapper. Like, like with all due respect, and I'm, I'm bringing this up very respectfully. I remember Tusi came on my show. He got like his girl. I don't even think his girl do nothing. They, they like. I think they love his girl more than they love him. Two C girlfriend. Yeah, she probably got a little clothing line now or something like that. You know what I mean? Doing a thing. She's a cool girl, but it's like, yo, nowadays, if you're a girlfriend of a lit rapper, bro, you're better off. So, like, to keep it real, that nigga don't owe you. You might owe that nigga. In reality, you might owe that nigga. You now famous. You ain't had to do not a goddamn thing other than be that that motherfucker's like girlfriend or whatever the case is. Look at the NLE Chopper's NLE Chopper uh, baby moms. Like he got a baby mom, the one that Blueface was trying to say he smashed. What's he her name? Tea time with the baby mamas today. Marissa to called me like Marissa Denae. Like bro, as long as you attractive, bro. Look, this chick got like a million followers. What does she do? Nothing. You know what I mean? Like. Bruh. Like, and I'm pretty sure she didn't monetize whatever. Like, all she got to do is just stop posting thirst traps for 20 seconds and post, like, you know what I mean, post a clothing line, and she probably makes some money. Say it's Valentine's Day. Okay, who? Oh, oh, Annalie Chopper was holding it down. Who bought her all this for her Valentine's Day? Okay. Wait, was this nigga the Valentine's? Who is this nigga? I gotta be the car salesman or some shit. Okay. All right. She was the girl that was like supposedly older than him. Yo, is, uh, let me not let me not try to say nothing slick about this woman. All right. Cool. All right, man. Uh let's move on. Ooh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Give me a second. Not not regards to this. I feel like I had a topic. Oh, by the way, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. I'm sorry to tell y'all, man. I got I, I got my man Jake Paul, bro. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I see Mike Tyson walking into a building with a cane, bro. I'm sorry. Mike Tyson walking with cane. Can you guys vouch for me? Am I right? No. Nope. How you doing, Mike? Good to see you, brother. You're looking good, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Photo, Mr. Tyson? Bro, unless that nigga on some equalizer type of shit, nigga, and he's just playing, nah, nigga. Nah, bro. Even though they keep showing videos like this. Careful on that uppercut. But him walking always looks crazy. Though. Like, you got to realize in a fight, like, you're not going to just stand in one place. I, I, again, I don't know about his legs. I don't know about his legs. But, but how old is Mike Tyson? How old is Mike Tyson? He 57 My nigga I'm gonna be honest with you bro If Jake Paul I don't think Jake Paul could outbox Mike And we do know Mike has Tremendous power historically But Mike is 57 bro If he can't win this shit nigga This is a goddamn shame bro I'm not even gonna lie to you Let me see this is more footage of him walking supposedly with a cane. Even though we keep seeing the videos, I think I don't know if he's posting it on his page or how we're seeing it. We keep seeing like these videos of him looking fucking amazing. <laughs> the only problem with with this footage, it looks great, but it's always jump cuts. <laughs> They're all jump cuts. It shows combination and jump cuts. Day four, you know, it was okay, but you don't know what you got in store, baby. Day two, we're getting ready for you. They're all jump cuts. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I know y'all gonna say I'm tripping. Now, granted, do I think my uh, um, do, do I think Jake Paul is gonna knock out Mike Tyson? No, but I think if it goes the distance, and I don't think he can outbox him. Sorry, I don't think he could outbox him, but I do think he should have more stamina, and I do think just off the the, the factor of I'm thinking that Tyson has limited mobility. I'm thinking that Jake Paul should be more in shape. I think Jake Paul should win, right? And, I, and again, nothing has to do with boxing or a knockout. I heard that Tyson's getting paid in like decent six figures. This might be at least like a $20 million fight for him, right? You know what they said about the Francis and Ganyu versus um, Anthony Joshua fight? They said that I forgot how much the money was, but but they were saying like one got paid like forty million and the other got paid like twenty or whatever the case is, and, and but it was more predicated on the fact that um you know that shit happened in Saudi Arabia and and basically you know them them little oil tycoon niggas they they just throw money at anything. I feel like they literally just want to watch backyard brawling, but they just like doing it big, so they don't give a fuck about money. But I'm going to be honest with you. This fight is sold off Tyson's reputation. By the way, this is going to be at the AT&T Stadium in, in Arlington, Texas. Let's look at look up the capacity. AT&T Stadium. Capacity. 80,000. Right? This is where the Dallas Cowboys play, right? 80,000. They're going to sell it out. And it's really off. People love to see Mike in a fight. And, and Jake finally got a, an opponent that we, just off reputation, we want to see Jake get knocked out on. By the way, this is going to be live on Netflix. It, we, we don't know if Netflix is going to charge an additional fee to watch it or it's just free for all Netflix members, which this is kind of crazy. I'm wondering what their business model is. You know, you know, we've been talking business a good amount today. I'm wondering if their business model is, yo, we're going to, Either have some commercial, which I don't think they're going to do commercial, but I'm wondering if they're going to be like, yo, pay an extra $5 and you get to see the fight. Or they're going to be like, it's free for everyone. Because if I'm thinking these numbers are what it could be, 
let's say they spent fifty million dollars to buy this fight, right? So they, they they're gonna pay both fighters, you know, twenty million and probably ten million for some other shit, right? So let's say they spend fifty million to buy this event. How does Netflix make that back, right? Is this supposed to be a big money driver for people to subscribe to Netflix for the first time? Because I feel like most people already have Netflix. And if you didn't have Netflix, I don't think that niggas would just get, uh, maybe they would sign up for Netflix just for this because they pay for pay-per-view if, if, just for that, right? What's what's the business model for this? Somebody said Jake Paul couldn't beat Roy Jones. <coughs> Yo, my allergies is going crazy. If, if Netflix charged for this, you're canceling? Hmm. Oh, by the way, they've done live events already, too. Didn't they do um, the comedy show from Dave Chappelle? That aired live, right? So Dave Chappelle's comedy special, Dave Chappelle Netflix special live. He did one live, right? I think he had done one that, that came out live. It came out live, and I think it was available the next day or something like that, like for, for VOD watching. Somebody said it was Chris Rock. Oh, it was Chris Rock. Oh. Chris Rock. Live from Netflix is a new um, stand-up special. They didn't charge extra for this, right? Let's read it. For the first time ever, Netflix is streaming a massive global event live. The new Chris Rock stand-up special was, takes place on March 4th. That was last year, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah, Okay. I don't think they, they, were, they talked about fucking... Yeah, it's streamed live this and third. For details how to watch, blah, 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 da, 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 click here. We'll click there. And yeah, before the show, make sure you get comfortable, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it looked like they, the watch live red play button will be available. Okay. Which, by the way, I think a boxing event. So they tried out live before, and I guess they tried it for the first time with Chris Rock, uh, his comedy special. Remember, this was the comedy special that everybody wanted him to talk about, obviously, the whole slap thing with uh, um, uh, Will Smith. But interestingly enough, like I don't think this was probably the best format to air live because I don't think people watch comedy specials live anymore, right? Um, or, or at least, you know, oh, it's only coming at one time. I think a boxing event, yes, because everybody on the timeline is going to be talking about it. Okay. I hate Ben against Smite, man. But I, I maybe I shouldn't even pick Jake Paul because you know what's gonna happen though. Think about this, right? If this goes a distance, and and none of us is seeing Jake Paul knock out Mike Tyson. If that if if Jake Paul knocks out Mike Tyson, it's done. Like it's crazy. But if he goes a distance with Mike. Just off of future fight revenue or potential fights in the future, future potential fights, don't they kind of be? And, and that's how, by the way, I, I've changed the way I looked at boxing now. I only look at boxing in, in dollars and cents. You know what I mean? Boxing is so much different from the UFC. Boxing only is a viable, profitable sports when there's an event you want to watch. While the UFC will put any card on the screen and because they control the fighters so much, you see fights when you want to, but you're always engaged in the overall product of the UFC while boxing is who's fighting. So the best outcome, and this is how I've thought about boxing recently, what's the best outcome that could get more money in the future, right? Like, for example, at a particular time, Floyd was a moneymaker for showtime and for just like all these like you know wbc and all that type of it it him losing even a decision just wasn't going to be good for business right you're selling more tickets when he's undefeated when he's the guy you want to hate in this situation and i'm not saying that's why floyd won i do think floyd won his fights but i do think that you know when it gets close and it gets to a decision referees are probably incentivized to keep the money train going. And I think the money train in this particular situation is Jake losing on a decision, but people could say, damn, yo, he really gave Tyson a run for his money. You get what I mean? 
What does that do? Tyson can go fight again because we're always going to watch Tyson as long as he doesn't get – if he gets knocked out, he's done. Like, we, like we're like we going to say, bro, please don't get back in the ring again. You're losing to Jake Paul, right? We're going to beg him not to get back in the ring. If if it's a down-to-the-wire decision like how it was – you know, it, it, it went to a decision with um, Roy Jones, right? Yeah, cool. He could do it again. Um, also, we're not going to look at Jake Paul no type of way. We're going to be like, yo, yo, bro, you boxed one of the greatest boxers of all time. He's a seasoned heavyweight. He's a seasoned vet. And we, even though he's older, he, we still look at you as the, 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 the by far underdog. You know what I mean? So he's good even with the loss. Him getting knocked out, uh... I think that would be very embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie, it would be very embarrassing. But uh, I think it's an embarrassment you could get over. It's Mike Tyson knocking you out, right? It's Mike Tyson, right? Somebody said Jake versus Floyd. Do we need that? Um, truthfully, and, and, and this is gonna make it seem like either I'm on Jake Paul's dick or I'm like really. And y'all know I do love Floyd. I love me some money Mayweather. Pause. I think Jake too big for him. Pause. Oh my god, that sound gay. Pause. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I think Jake Jake can't go down to the weight to fight Floyd. And Floyd can't go up to the weight to fight um Jake. So what weight would, would they fight at? You know what I mean? Unless it's some super exhibition type of shit like Logan did with with, with, with Floyd. Right? Super exhibition, right? Like any and, and in that you I don't think you're going to see any type of knockdown or knockout. It's just going to be like, let's dance around, uh, dance around. You know what I mean? Like, one of those. But I can't see, like, a real fight happening. The fight with Logan was, like, some super exhibition shit, bro. Like, you could tell they ain't give they were a super exhibition. Like, come on, right? Like, I don't think this is a super exhibition shit. I think this is an actual fight. This is an actual fight. Right? I think Floyd and Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't even think... Did they even announce a winner? I, 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 I think there was no winner. There's no winner. Um... Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, there was no winner announced. Yeah, it was, it was like exhibition. Yeah, it was an exhibition boxing match. Now, Floyd, now, now Tyson and uh, Tyson versus Jake Paul. I don't know if that's going to come up. Yeah, this is going to be a boxing match, which I, I think I think is going to count towards Jake's record, right? Yeah, there's going to be a winner. There is going to be a winner announced. I don't know if it's going to be counting towards Mike's professional record, but there is going to be a winner announced, which is very different than the fight we saw before. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. I think Floyd is down to do exhibition matches versus anybody because he could toy around for the most part, and none of these guys have the boxing ability to really hang with him. Right, even though Jake might have some power, I still think he sneaks out of there and he still could hold. He's gonna do his thing, exhibition wise. He's just gonna beat him off punches. Good. Um, a real fight. Um, I, I I think it's a little bit different if you know you require. Well, well, they wouldn't be able to fight because of weight classes. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Yo, my allergies are killing me, bro. <laughs> uh, look at the back paddling reform boy yet again. He know that we finna call the governor tomorrow, and look what he says. It's entertainment. I said, how much y'all want to admit I got that reform? I'm gonna get that reform shit stopped for that hating ass thing of me. Either he stop being a thug or be a full time activist. We gonna get a meeting with that governor over him standing next to a guy who literally who's threatening violence and acting like a killer online, but crying when he when he when he's in their presence. We can play that game too. You know what he tweeted me and said? That's why I'm actually talking reckless to you. It's Twitter 
entertainment. We know what you're trying to do, and the internet got your head screwed up badly. These guys are actually saying what they jealous of with me. This guy wants me dead or in jail. Philly, done with you. Shaking my head. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I, should, I was going to tweet him like, you'll make Philly great again. I don't care. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yo, Meek, I, 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 think, I think just respectfully, you misunderstand the polls of Philly. Philly, you're acting like Philly dethroned you as king and made me king. I am not a king of Philly. I'm only a media entity. What Philly has said, Philly doesn't have to be done with ACK or start with ACK. What Philly has unilaterally said is they're tired of being blackballed and not having the same opportunity as people from other cities. Don't talk about what Philly's idea of academics is. Talk about how Philly feels about being given a chance, a platform, and what Philly felt you have done while you held that position and the ball you didn't pass to others and how they feel you actively blocked other people, okay? I understand that you're over here now trying to play victim, saying that this guy wants me dead or in jail, but you tweeted out your damn self, sir, you're willing to die. But I guess what you're trying to say now is all satire. That's not going to stop us from calling the governor. We're going to call him tomorrow, okay? We're going to have a hotline going on. I'm going to put it on my story. Make sure everybody call that motherfucker, okay? We're going to call your governor because him standing next to a low-life level scum like you while you tweet out one side of your mouth about how you will spin blocks, got switches, got Dracos, will kill niggas, pull up to niggas' house, piss on their steps. You got a million dollars to wipe people's families off the map. You cannot be in the same breath. Then look in the other way, in the other side of your mouth, saying, how much the prison system is unfair because a nigga who does A deserves to be in jail. But you ain't the guy who do A. You just keep saying it. So you know what we're going to do? Just like how you told the governor that I'm responsible for murders, we're going to give you the choice. You either stop doing that. We're going to make sure you stop. We, like, it's over for that. Okay? Stop tweet like a killer. Or you could tweet like a killer and say his jokes. But you're not going to be sitting next to the fucking governor. You're going to pick one. Then we're giving you an ultimatum. You can't, you can't be an activist in the daytime and a goddamn villain in the nighttime. What you think this is, nigga? Gotham City? No, nigga. You got to pick a goddamn side. Are you a killer? Or are you an activist? That is the question I will continue to ask you. And I'm going to ask the mayor. Michael Rubin is a private businessman at this point. I don't have nothing to ask him. They don't care as long as you make their them their, their iced coffees and their lat lattes and, you know what I mean, you fix them their drinks and bunny hop all over the place like a good boy. We saw you even bunny hopping on the under radar freestyle. It's okay. Of course, he's going to like you. Maybe you're giving motherfucking Robert Kraft the rugged tug he used to get in those spots. We got no problem with you and the couple white billionaires you got going on, right? But you know who we do got a problem with? Anytime you stand next to an elected official, law enforcement, or anybody else, and you try to act like you're the epitome of what injustice on a prison reform level looks like. You went to jail for popping a wheelie boy. Stop it, okay? You're acting like you didn't have... Rock Nation show up to court every single time. They wrote, they wrote, they, you damn near had the FBI investigate your goddamn judge because you were crying saying it was unfair. You had every opportunity to prevent your situations, had the best lawyers in the whole world. You had Jay-Z, Desiree Perez was at every hearing. You're not the person who's the normal person in Philadelphia, who's a normal person in Pennsylvania, who doesn't have enough money. You talking about all that shit you're doing. You're not the same person. You're not the example. You can't be the poster boy, especially, especially when you keep tweeting how you're down to kill people. Those tweets, that's what incites violence. When you say you're going to come to somebody's block and wipe their family off the map, you think that nigga ain't going to pick up a gun? You think academics interview will make him pick up a gun? 
You think when you're threatening to, 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 to get rid of his very existence, a guy with all the resources in the world, you have 20 million goddamn followers. When you say that, there's a crash out motherfucker who says a million dollars. They never seen 10,000. You think that person ain't going to say, bro, the, all these niggas, they, they don't have 15 places like you. You live in Atlanta. You don't live in Philadelphia no more. When you drove to when you drove to Philadelphia at two a.m. You have a condo, a high rise condo in motherfucking Manhattan. You drove your car that you probably haven't driven it in so long because you get chauffeured around this place. It had the check engine light on. You drove to Philly. I did the fucking map quest, nigga. That's three hours of driving at two o'clock to act like you were spinning in a place you don't live. Why? That's not inciting violence, nigga. You think you could do that and niggas there to be like, oh, no, it's just me. You didn't come to do a concert. You could have tried to. How about you give a concert to the kids? How about you you do a free concert and try to give the proceeds? That's how you're supposed to show back up to your city. Not at two o'clock. Acting like, you know what everybody in the city said? They never seen you, nigga. You rode around in a car that nobody knows with tents. Acting like you were spinning. They ran three red lights getting the fuck on out of there. Why? Because you want to cause dysfunction. You don't live in them places. You don't live on Burke Street. I don't care how much times you rap about it. You don't live there. You don't live on Catherine Block no more either. The same people you saying RIP to, everybody comes back to me with a story saying how much you could have helped them by the same attention you're giving to me. The same attention you're giving to me because you're obsessed, my nigga. I make money off of your stupid ass. You're the dumbest one. You're the biggest one. You're the biggest clown in the circus. The artists in your city wish you gave them this attention, nigga. I get it out of you like that. Pause. I'm not no ditty shit. You sit up tweeting at me every fucking day. But I like it. Because, as I said, 30 days, 30 nights. You just thought you could bully me. Nah. They ain't that fun with a rabbit got a gun, huh? But that's your problem. Redirect your energy. Pick a side. You tweeted that a couple years ago. It's time to pick a side. It's time for you to pick a side. Activists are killer. Energy you giving here, you keep tweeting at me? Go tweet at some of the young guys coming up in your city. OT7 Kwani just performed that motherfucking rolling loud. Philly's looking good. There's a bunch of young niggas that's popping. You use your timeline to only talk tough. But you're not down to talk tough to the people who are actually tough with you. Cooley dropping tomorrow. Cooley talking about how he said, Ack, I can't believe that nigga said he was going to come piss on your steps. I shot a whole music video on this block. Feet up on the dash. Where was he at? Oh, but if I mention that, you're going to say I'm fueling street beef, right? You've been hating on Quilly since a long time, too. You don't like when I steer the conversation in ways you don't like. Think about your reputation in your own city when it took me 10 calendar days, nigga, to turn your whole city against you. Think about it. You took 20 years to build that reputation. 10 days, the entire city was waiting on what niggas got to say about you. What did you do? What did you do? What is your legacy? You think I could have went to Atlanta or start talking about Atlanta and turn the entire Atlanta um, against Thug? God rest Nipsey. You think I could have turned motherfucking L.A. against him? God rest motherfucking um, uh, um, Young Dolph. You think Memphis would have turned against him? What's your legacy, nigga? Your legacy is nothing but hate. You gonna be the, the biggest circus, still uh, the biggest clown in my circus because as long as you're willing to engage with me, I'm gonna showcase the fact that your career ain't the same, and you gonna realize this back and forth. Only keep highlighting and crystallizing how much you're a failure while we just having fun with this shit. I'm in the media. Anytime a rapper want to go back and forth, oh, let's go. 
Wisen up, Meek. Rameek. Change your legacy. Help the people in your town. Why, why the fuck the biggest platform they, they're getting? We have 16,000 people watching live. Why the fuck is the biggest platform they're getting? It's from me. I'm not from Philadelphia. I do like Philly, but I'm not from Philadelphia. Why is it the only time you showed up to your city was to go there at 2 a.m.? You stayed there for 13 minutes and recorded 15 videos. And you post them when you were, you, nigga, nigga, you post them when you, 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 you're driving over the bridge like, all right, man, I'm, I'm safe again. Come on, bro. Tell me next time you'll go live. Go live to do what? Who are you trying to still make believe that you're a killer? Okay, how about we make how about we we help the governor believe you're a killer then? Because that's what you want, right? You want us to believe that you're spinning. You want us to believe that you're doing these things, right? Because you keep doing it. We just watched a video of you balling, my nigga. Just pick a side. Because when you play the I'm in the hood at two o'clock spinning and I'm in the trenches, those young kids who don't got no out, who they have now taken and adopted drill music to Philly. When they see that this gangster who, nigga, you live in a high-rise apartment in motherfucking Manhattan making whack-ass music, playing Call of Duty all goddamn day. Go back to Atlanta. Oh, thug in jail. Little baby got tired of you. Nigga, go do something positive. <laughs> You got the kids in Philly watching you on your Instagram acting like you about to go kill something. And then the next day when you hear about eight people got shot and they all got shot, it's all kids. You know what you said? Yo, the crime got to stop. Who do you think they look up to? You think they're like, oh, we want to be like, act. they want to be like you. What you telling them though? Then you start spinning, we going to spray up your car. That's what you said. Third Third line in your fucking whack ass freestyle on the radar. Fifth line, Turks and Caicos. I just came back and bought me two Dracos. What are you saying? It's sad because you're a grown ass man. You 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 approaching forty, but you you face a case of arrested development. You're trying to prove childish things to people who wouldn't believe it even if you showed them. Meek, let me once again remind you, maybe some people were fooled, but you could you could kill somebody on camera. Our perception of you has already been skewed. Why even try to prove it? You made it out. That's the difference between somebody as dumb as you and somebody like Jay-Z. Jay-Z evolved with his music. You still rapping like the nigga who didn't make it. Except it's blatantly clear that you did. Your lifestyle don't match. You talk about all these billionaires you hanging out with, my nigga. And all this money you got. Didn't Rick Ross buy your house? Let me just look this up because I might be... <laughs> I might be mistaken. Meek Mill Rick Ross. Rick Ross bought your house for $4.2 million. Now, generally, to be honest, I'm not even going to say that's a bad thing. Sold a house for $4 million. It's cool. But with all this money and millionaire, billionaire shit you be talking to me, I equate it as that because Rick Ross was your boss too. To me, it's like me working for an employer and the employer giving me money that I could go buy something, then they bought they bought it back from me. Just pipe down, my brother. I think some people do appreciate the efforts that you have on the reform circuit. But I'd be remiss to allow someone who's as hypocritical as you throw out idle threats and 
everything you do say is definitely we're making sure everything is documented <laughs> because there ain't no tweet and delete my, my nigga and yes I don't care if you called a hater or not because I thought you was a hater when you said you were going to come to my house but you was talking big, big and bad you was talking like you was the biggest killer in town right Okay, well, bunny hop out of this one. We're going to go tell that governor. Tomorrow, chat, as I said, let me pull the website up. I wrote my letter. Y'all need to write y'alls. I'll give y'all, I'll only say this. Please leave Poundside Pop name out of it. That's actually the nigga in the streets, you know. And I'm actually going to apologize to Poundside Pop. I shouldn't even, um, even put your name in there. We are just going to write a letter. Y'all can put Livingston Allen in the name because I'm definitely a civilian. Ramik Robert Williams. You're going to either be a killer or you're going to be an activist. And we're going to make sure this happens, okay? We're going to hit up Josh Shapiro. Matter of fact, in all these videos, I'm going to come up with a list of these motherfucking names that stood next to you. Because they're all elected officials and they, they have to answer to the people. Why are you standing next to a nigga who's over here claiming he wants violence to decrease, yet he's actually threatening to kill people? We're not going to allow that to happen. If you haven't realized, Meek, I've been whipping your ass with my platform. Remember the same platform you thought was with some peon shit? I've been whipping your bitch ass with it, nigga. I've been whipping your ass with it. You, you, you can't realize? This platform is giving you the beats, huh? Yeah. 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 I know. Your 6K wouldn't be known. <laughs> You're known as Mr. 6K. Cuss me. Yeah. 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 You didn't realize? Meek, you, you don't realize how it's a little bit different. Remember years ago when you was talking all this big and bad? Nigga, I waited four years. You remember when Drake said I waited four days, nigga, where y'all at? I waited four years. I gathered every stone. I did my due diligence. When I know a nigga always going to turn bad on me, nigga, I make sure I have a cabinet full of files on you. I told you. I'm finna get your Atlantic contract and I'm gonna put it on the screen. All that money talk you talking, we gonna figure out where it is. I might get your taxes. You can't beef with the media. You see, every time you tweet, they tell you to shut up. Every time I go live, they say I'm roasting you. Optics. You can barely read and write. But we'll see. We will see. I had four years. Trust me. I will see some shit. Let me just file it away in the day I need to expose Meek Mill. Let's put it over here. Okay. You know how many times I've seen shit and I wanted to laugh and like, okay, put this here. Oh, put this here. I know you was mad at me. I remember you was on Clubhouse one time with me. And you was like, nah, you know, this is niggas livelihoods or whatever. Well, you could you could give me the credit for ruining this part of your career. Okay? I'll take this credit. I'll take this credit. Because <laughs> I remember you were mad. You're like, you know, if, if niggas start losing money because he, well, I'll take this, this credit. For this part of your career being, <laughs> you see all the press, you was trying to blame it on a white man. No, this was because Livingston George Allen, academics, when niggas called you gay, I ain't call you gay. You flipped out thinking, let me go. You try to do the, oh, I'm going to just go step on or press this little, this blogger dirt dude. You, you, you know, I noticed about your tweets too. One of your tweets is very interesting. One of your tweets was very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Damn, this thing is so tweeting. Even when you was talking to the podcast thing, one thing I realized you were very smart with, everybody got money, Meek. And I think you start realizing a lot of these streamers, you could say, oh, I'm just getting drunk from the chair. You're in the booth rapping a bunch of trash. 
Okay, I, I, you, you, let me, actually, I won't even shit on you like that. I'm good. Anyway. I won't even. I won't even. I'm, I'm glad y'all started putting respect on streamers because the streamers is getting to it too. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Anyway, Meek, um, I gave you a good lesson in, in some business sense earlier. This was just about, I just had to kind of fix you up on the, on the um, hypocrisy sense because... Again, this is going to be a concerted effort. And if we don't get a response tomorrow, we'll find the assistant or the executive assistant to that governor. We'll blow that phone up. We're going to get some type of answer. And I'm going to be honest with you. When the desired result happens, what we're going to tell you is that you did it to your fucking self. We'll put you back on them same blocks that you so desperately want to be on. You could go spin in then. Okay? Okay, Mr. Cyclone? Okay. All right. All right. That was a, that was a little impromptu. All right, Mike Tyson and uh, Jake Paul. I think I think we finished that though. Wait, what? What? There was a topic that I wanted to get to. Why can't I find it? Oh. Yo, did y'all see Saucy Santana and Gilbert Arenas? I think we played this before, but look like, you know, um, there's some more developments. And I ain't going to lie, I, I, I believe that, um, I believe Gilbert, I believe Gilbert is smart and he kind of de-escalated a little bit because, you know, you know them peoples will cancel you, right? So remember when, the, like, they were laughing at, um, you know, Saucy Santana. Saucy Santana make a, made a video and said this. Baby, we're gonna make this real quick for you since motherfuckers act like they don't know what the fuck going on. I don't know what the fuck was funny when you talking to motherfucking Nick. You laughing. Oh, ha, ha, ha. He a homeboy. He a homeboy. He not a rapper. Bitch, I am a motherfucking rapper. That's how I make most of my motherfucking money. Bitch, you better check in with your niece, your nephew, your grandma, your mama, bitch, your daughters. I don't know what the fuck you got. I don't know who the fuck you is. Bitch, tap the fuck in. Bitch, you can find a whole lot about Saucy Santana. Bitch, second of motherfucking all, I know you about to go jack your motherfucking dick to that twerk video because you put it up too many motherfucking times on the motherfucking camera for you to be so hee hee motherfucking ha ha. Bitch, you Yo, how there beeps in this and you can still hear the curse words. Keep watching this ass and I know it's like motherfucking water. You'll enjoy that later. And motherfucking Nick, stop motherfucking playing on me, bitch. All that motherfucking giggling get in the motherfucking field. About me. Oh, shit. Anyway. It's a good show. Right anyway, but yeah, my, my my man Gilbert, he cleaned it up. Pause. You know, I just want to say, you know, look, the, it threw me off. It right? did. I know no, it's no. gonna throw you off. That's why I, I said. I've never at, seen somebody yeah. with nails and the beard. <laughs> I, that, that was the problem. It just threw me. It threw me off. And then, and then when I hit the video, twerk. Did you like it? Damn. You like the twerk video? He said it's like water. What you say that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Stop! Like no, no, lie. no! Stop! Like <laughs> Stop! I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not rolling, bro. No. no I mean, I'm all I'm saying, if I had the, if I had the rate between who's better, him. <laughs> I'm trying to see if him. Or Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Stop, man. I don't no. know who I'm going to throw my dollars to, dog. <laughs> a good show is a good show. <laughs> oh, man. You see, Gilbert had to kind of bring it back in. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, but, you know, I... Hey, hey, Sauce. Hey, Sauce, listen. I got rules. You got... You, listen, you can't talk. <laughs> No, no. Nope, and you nope. can't look at me. If nope. you look, I got I got hundred those. I got listen. I got the where does money come from? I got I got the honeys. Listen, so hey, listen. I don't mind. I don't know if you dealt with. <laughs> I don't know if Nick is that what you was doing though. 
I was like this. He was like this. I was, like this. <laughs> I was leaving it. He was leaving it on the dresser. Hey, Zazie, I'm being that like this. Yeah. Shake it, my nigga. Can you say that? Yo, this is crazy. Yo, my nigga Gilbert is trying not to be canceled. That nigga got to act like he would throw money at Saucy Santana. This is crazy. We live in a crazy world, people. Nah, stop. You can't do that? Nah, nah, nah. Hell no. Nah. What you doing with all this money, man? No, I'm saying, how are you supposed to... How do you supposed to get a lap dance from the dude no, and you straight? To, you gotta sneak it to him. You gotta play too. You gotta say, you see that right there? You see that? Right? <laughs> you see? You see that right there? <laughs> that's all you play. Up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't lap. See, that's that's why oh, you got in trouble. All right, I'm done. It's a good show. Yeah. You can't. The all I'm saying is, <laughs> it, it was twerking just a little bit better than, <laughs> than making a style. It kind of caught me off guard. So like, wait, I had to double back to make sure it's the same person. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't. Duh. All I'm saying is. Yo, now this oh, stupid uh, motherfucker, but, Saucy Santana, is actually going to believe that, like, Gilbert really want to fuck with him? Look, wait. Ayo, hey, Gil, let me holler at you. I had a crush on you since I was a kid. You my baby daddy. <laughs> Niggas like this be so desperate, bro. Whatever. Okay, let me just move on. All right, all right, all right, all right, bro. Okay, okay, all right. Um, what else is going on, bro? What else is going on? Huh? What? Yo, Drake just give everybody money. Don't, don't, don't he? I need all the bad bitches to the floor. No, I'm a How you feeling, child? One, two, three, let's go. If I was a bad bitch, I wanna fuck me too. I wanna suck me too. I wanna suck me too. If I was a bad bitch, I wanna hunt me. Yo, this is why blue face said, this is what you get when you have a vegan. <laughs> nah, hold on. Nah, that's my man. That's my man. That's my man. Nah, Edelie, that's my man. But this is wild. Yo, what's going on? Yo, what's going on right now? Yo, the retrograde is off. Yo, my, uh, fire. <laughs> why? Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know I got to play this, right? <laughs> Worked up though, cuz that's my fault. You know why it's my fault? Cuz this nigga's a Muslim, a vegan, and a crip. So it's like a nigga like that. <laughs> nah, yo, Italy, I fuck with you, bro. <laughs> that's funny. Me too. Wait, these lyrics is kind of wild. If I was a bad bitch, like I feel like this is one of the leftover songs that Blueface wrote for like his girl. You know how Blueface wrote that song, "Bad Bitch Like a Barbie." Right? Blue face, bad bitch like a Barbie. What's the name of that song? This one right here. Okay, okay, I, I can't speed up. I'm going to get it copywritten. Okay. He don't even know himself for real because he don't even know, like, that don't even make sense, girl. Like. <laughs> Nigga, you eat paninis and tofu and shit, like. <laughs> nah, Blueface funny. Nah, Blueface is hilarious. I wanna want me too. I wanna trap me too. No fucking shit, I wanna do it to me. Bitch, is we fucking or what? Hey, you sucking or what? Hey, let me nut on your butt. Hey, put my face in your thighs, bitch. Spread on my ass till I crash, bitch. <laughs> Sit on my face. <laughs> Worked up though, cuz that's my fault. You know why it's my fault? Cuz this nigga's a Muslim, a vegan, and a crip. So it's like a nigga like that. 
he don't even know himself for real because he don't even know like that don't even make sense girl. like nigga you eat paninis and tofu and shit like Wait, did, it, did the lyrics say suck on me till I die? Oh, nah. <laughs> nah, Adelie, bro. I'm fucking with this song, bro. Wait, did he say suck on my Glock till it busts? I think he's trying to ting with this. He's trying to ting. He's trying to. This is really for the ladies, though. Is is if the ladies going to bite. Wasn't, wasn't that how, like, bust down Tatiana? Nah, I think niggas fuck with that song, too. I need all the bad bitches to the floor. Whoa! Emma How you feeling, child? One, two, three, let's go! If I was a bad bitch, I wanna fuck me too. I wanna suck me too. <laughs> Yo, I love Yo, now I fuck with Edelie Chopper. Yo, Edelie Chopper be hilarious. Remember Edelie Chopper was. <laughs> Yo. Hold on, Chad. Hold on. And the Lee Chopper BBL <laughs> Yo, Chad. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> we got it. Remember, and the Lee Chopper was, had like a BBL pill, bro? Nah. Nah, the BBL supplements. That's great. All right, his budget point three Phillies R&B and hip hop. Oh, yeah, Nicole, I got my guy just pulled up on me. Here we go, my bad. Supplements. Yeah, 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 the BBL. It's simple. Like, it's, bro, it is. Bro, it is. Here we go. Ready? Ask you about mm -hmm. the BBL supplements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The BBL. It's simple. Like it's bro, it is so simple. Everything is so simple. People that think everybody that think it's complex everything that's complicated is simple. Like basically, we worship like an African body. Mm -hmm. So so how do you get that? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You go to their culture, you see what they implement in their culture to, you know what I'm saying, to help benefit these certain parts of the body. No, I was just digging into that aspect of it, but I was really starting with the herbs. I didn't even do like the diet of the foods because I'm vegan, so I ain't gonna encourage someone to eat someone something that's not vegan. But right. even on a vegan level, I know what to put together to to make all of it come together. Like you know to make I mean? the waist small. It, it shrinks the waist, um, and it can, it grows the glutes, and um, which is what what makes the buttocks look more apparent. Mm -hmm. It just creates estrogen, and that's what that's what promotes bigger breasts. That's what promotes bigger butt. You know what I'm saying? Nah, fuck with Annalie, man. <laughs> Yo, remember when Annalie said, remember when Annalie said he would sub it? <laughs> what does that mean to you and why are you trying to, to do that? Um, I think the biggest thing is just the more that I keep into me and just keep in, it's like the more powerful I feel, the more my willpower is, the better <laughs> energy I have. I feel like sex as of right now is kind of like pointless because that's the main thing that I'm trying to prevent, which is releasing. How long like have you been practicing that? Just the start of this year? Um, it's been going on four months now. It's okay. been going on four months. <laughs> I want to suck me too. <laughs> Yo, I don't know why it's so funny. I don't know why it's so funny, bro. I don't know why it's so funny, bro. Nah, this is too funny, bro. I don't know why it's so funny, dog. Does it make you feel like different? What? Feel I different? feel amazing. Like the job I have is just a lot of people would throw their self at you, and um, the person, the person that's not as disciplined, you know, they're gonna take everything that's on their way. But it's kind of like. Now it builds a, a a barrier rather between the love the love and the lust. Ugh. If I was a bad bitch, I wanna want me too. I wanna trap me too. No freaking out with it. Nah, I'm fucking with it. <laughs> nah, and at least too funny, bro. Nah, and at least too funny, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what's so crazy? This song, this song, low key, so stupid. It might, it might blow up. This shit might be it. This might be the song. This might go crazy. I'm not even lying to y'all. This might go crazy. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all right now. <laughs> oh man, if I was a bad bitch, I wanna. It's kind of catchy, right? 
J. Cole dropped a surprise. How you doing? Man, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, I fuck with you. Great. Yeah, you so hard. <laughs> nah, you yeah, for real. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was sitting on that. Ooh, that's crazy. It sounds so fresh. Like, you didn't even call it a secret recipe. Like, the perfect way. It was like, all right. That was a great like, second day record. Yeah. I think the one we did third is going to be great. My boy, great. How you doing? Man, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Okay. Um, how long are these vlogs? Sh should I watch the vlog? Should I watch the vlog? Yo, I, I I know he dropped he dropped some music. Um, I might delete later too. Hold on. Should I watch it? Somebody said Cole's boring. Damn, y'all niggas is hating. Somebody said hell nah, don't watch this shit. Alright, y'all hating, y'all hating, y'all hating. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good, people. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um, real quick, real quick. Yes, Jules. Oh. Okay, first of all, so, so yes, Jules. Oh my god, don't tell me I fucked up. God damn it. Oh no, no I'm good. So Yurt's Jules, like basically is being sued by Team Yeezy for breaking the NDA. They fired her recently. And even Kanye West recently, you know, put it out there. He says, you know, th th this looked like a this looked like an actual lawsuit that they're filing, right? It says Julian Godard, which is uh yes, Jules. She's repeatedly blah, 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 and they're saying that the fines that she has, you know, ran up, and they even put her Twitter post where she says, fuck a NDA, um, sue me. I dare Milo or any lawyer Yeezy to try. So they basically show her blatant disregard of the fact that she signed an NDA and that she, you know, said she wouldn't say certain things, despise certain people, or even speak about, you know, um, gay or whatever uh, afterwards. So she has said, fuck the NDA, and they're suing her for that. So Kanye West posted that. Um, this is after she said, fuck an NDA, sue me. Now, she's still leaking stuff, and she just recently leaked, like, some messages between her and Ye. And, hold on. <coughs> and I guess she said, okay, oh, well, I guess she sent. It says, I sent new body to Ice Spice and Doja Cat. Let's see who sounds best. Hope you had a good time. Don't let the jet leave me behind taking a nap till 10. And I would like to help run things for you so we we are never in a position where you don't have permits again. Kanye says, yes, let's speak about that. I can understand why you turned the cameras off because people weren't understanding me and calling me crazy. You were under pressure. I need to up a rave in Saudi. What? And he said, and she said, tomorrow? Tomorrow? And she's and this is her caption now. It says, I'm not an influencer, I'm a manager, producer, host, and our consultant friend. Most importantly, an honest, loyal, hardworking single mother. Anytime a woman starts pulling the single mother shit, she trying to manipulate. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't even need to know the whole story. I know she trying to manipulate. Then she posted a picture with Justin LeBoy. By the way, what happened to that nigga? I, I think his meme page still popping, right? Like Justin LeBoy Instagram. Like his his meme page is still going strong right this but like him as a person look like he's more running around with kanye right he had a show on on revolt at one point but look like he's just team kanye remember drake drake looked like he was kind of dissing him at a point too and this is what yes jules is saying about um him i guess he's still around team kanye kanye he says and i refuse to let leeches like justin leboy and milo come for me and I guess uh, she's saying, fuck you. And she has a picture of Justin LeBoy. Wow, okay. She's been trying to expose some shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yes, Jules. Let's let's look at her Twitter feed. Hopefully, there ain't no porn on this bitch. So grateful God has shown me who my real friends are over the last few months. I know I have great blessings on the way. 
Okay, let me see. <clears throat> Chat, by the way, it's it, it just sinuses. Not sinuses, I mean, um, pollen season's about to pop in, so I'm having allergies. I, I'm, I gotta start taking allergy med medicine. Damn. So somebody says, she responds to her firing by saying, fuck an NDA, I dare Milo or anybody. Assuming she doubles down and says, this is accurate, I said what I said. Some people, she retweeted, somebody says, how are you going to fire the one person that was actively speaking to your fans on a daily basis before and after this album came out? That doesn't make sense to me. Yes, Jules, you deserve better. Of course, she posts a little uh, thirst trap in the middle of it with a Snapchat link, which, by the way, if you don't know, all these influencers are making a fucking killing off Snapchat. This is why she probably posted that shit to Snapchat, too. Yeah, she's, yeah, once you see this little Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball thing right here, they're getting paid an arm and a leg if they could get views on Snapchat because Snapchat now is putting ads in the feed of qualified um, celebrities, you know, Snapchat account feeds, right? Let me see. He said, fuck Milo. Try me a little bit. Damn. Is she natural? Damn, she loves showing off this body. She's like, one thirst trap, one tweet about yay. One thirst trap, one tweet about yay. Victory favors the brave. Keep that same energy. God, I trust you. Perspective is everything. I pled elegance. And she said unemployed with two thirst traps. Okay. Yeah, this chick happened. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, Kanye, this is probably a good firing, bro. Like, if this chick always focuses about showing that she naked, bro, like, I'm good, bro. Like, she, bro, she not no different than one of these OnlyFans girls that sneak on to, like, a lit streamer's stream. And, you know, they're like, no, no, I, I'm here for you. I love you. No, no, I really care about you. All, all the time, they're, just, they're siphoning off people to go check out their OnlyFans, my nigga. You know what I mean? Like, bro. If you work for Kanye, and obviously she don't anymore, you, like, you're not fucking posting a bunch of selfies like that that's, you know, in, like, seem like you're trying to indulge in OnlyFans or some shit like that. Like, come on. Like, look at look at this fucking feed. Hell nah. So never present an idea as my own. Okay, this was about some vinyl shit. I know the fans were mad about her there. Huh. So here's what Milo, the chief of staff, who controls who gets hired and fired when they get paid, think about the very fan base that fought so hard to get Ye his first number one in over a decade. It's a Ye's team not thrilled to be associated with this. I'm not sure what it's even about. Apparently there was a pretty strong negative response to some Twitter space or something. Let me know if you need anything. Surely the last thing we need is some bright ideas from Down Syndrome mega fans on social media. <laughs> Half of these obsessed mega fans online have developmental disorders. I'm not very m much a fan anyway of the fake sounding tell us what you think outreach feels atrocious off brand for Ye and needs a rethink. That is true. Kanye don't ask people what he think. So that's kind of true. That we have there that anyone else who is not subscribed... Um cannot have access to but uh in addition to that i'd love to have a social aspect where we can gather like this and yay and other team members could just pop in and pop out at their own leisure and kind of hear what everybody has to say and what the ideas are and i agree with her fire fuck all that Bro, you think if you think Kanye West is giving a fuck what a fan is saying, bro, like come on, bro, like that nigga literally just said he got beef with Jesus, bro, like yo, you think he, yo, Kanye is tight at Jesus? You think he's about to hear what a fan gotta say, dog? Man, get Shorty's over here just yo, she's just clout farming off of Ye's fans by being like, hey, I'm the conduit between y'all and Ye. Since Ye don't talk to y'all, I talk to y'all. No. You're trying to farm those people as followers for yourself to go watch your naked bikini twerk videos on fucking Snapchat, nigga. Fuck that. Hell nah, good firing. I don't even know that nigga Milo because I hear you on some weird shit. But nigga, fire that chick. Get her out of there. The fuck is you got going on? This Yo, you, if you think Kanye's into this shit, you must be out of your damn mind. Kanye got his wife wearing like, like, like wearing a stocking cap over her whole body, nigga. 
basically showing off her pussy and her titties at all time. Her father can't even control that nigga or get a word with him. He don't give a fuck what we think, what she think, what nobody think. You think Kanye West is ready to hear what a fan think? Get the fuck on out of here. She don't know Ye then. God, oh, come on, nigga. I feel like I know Ye more than her. The hell? You think Ye's on some crowdfunding, crowdsourcing? Hell nah. He don't want no idea for no goddamn fan? I'm sorry. Nah, fuck all that. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, dog. Nah, uh-uh. Uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 she's cloud farming. Why are you always talking to fans? Bro, why are you always talking to fans? Oh, no, I got to be the person who tells them what the fans think. Kanye don't give a fuck what the fans think. He never asked for what the fans think. He don't. Nigga, Kanye West done told his own fan pages to, to eat a dick. You think Kanye West needs their opinion? You see what happened when, listen, you see what happened when that nigga sent clothes to motherfucking Kai that and he thought Kai was, uh, uh, was even questioning if the shit was hot? That nigga said, nigga, don't make no fucking jokes about my clothes, nigga. Look, don't make no fucking jokes about my clothes. When you ain't saying nothing about what Adidas is doing, vultures came out, you ain't even play my verse, nigga. You control, don't even play with me, nigga. That's how Kanye giving it up. Kai's like, I hear you, bro. But ain't no jokes. What's being said, I just opened up the package and showed love instantly. All I did was try it out. It didn't fit. No jokes made. I just immediately asked for a new pair. So you ain't do nothing wrong? So I felt this way for no fucking reason? He said, yes. He said, man, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> you was told to this my shit. You a pawn. <laughs> you think this Kanye want to be in a Twitter spaces Listening to fucking fans give him critique? Yo, did you see the shit with Kanye's manager talking crazy? Yo, Kanye's manager got on the phone with, with, with motherfucking, um, um, yeah, Kanye's manager got on the phone. Let me see if I can play. Where Kanye manager at? Kanye manager got on the phone with Kai. Listen to this shit. Monopoly, Kanye's manager. How you doing? Sir? How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. You have a brief moment to speak. Yeah, I, I can speak. I can talk. Alright, cool. So, uh, you know, I know that you guys are kind of bumping heads and stuff. Uh, brief moment, and uh, I wanted to reach out and see if there's a way that we could find a peaceful resolution and just get on the same page. Cause that's yeah, I'm, 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 I'm basically just. Oh shit, <laughs> yo, hey, hey, yo, you know what's, you know what's kind of interesting, I keep telling y'all, number one, the line between media and musicians have always been very odd, because back in the day, media just waited on musicians, artists used to be able to bully media, and media needed them for a look, right, so, Media needed you for an interview. You could leverage the fact they need you to get them to play your records, to get them to act how you want to act. These days, even though maybe not necessarily you don't consider traditional media, streamers are more lit than the rappers. Now, I'm not saying that Kai is more lit than Kanye, but I'm talking about that dynamic is still pervasive with older rappers, this is one of the reasons me and Meek bump heads. Meek doesn't respect nobody, but he definitely don't respect a nigga who runs a blog page. Do you get what I'm saying? So when he talks to me, it usually has a little bit more tint of disrespect. Just like how you see this conversation happening already. They, like, Kanye's manager, like, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, let me finish. You know what I mean? Like, whoa. Like. You could tell already it, the tone is one that might lack some of the respect that should be there if y'all are, which I always say, if y'all don't respect somebody, why do y'all care about their opinion? You get what I'm saying? 
It's like it, it always puzzles me with me. I'm like, yo, nigga, if if if, if I don't matter or if I'm not respected. Like, why do you always care about my opinion? It's like this. Like, you can't call the nigga up after y'all are all reacting to his reaction to the clothes and then try to sun him like he's just some little boy. You get what I mean? So so Kai's confused already. Leave. Where are together. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I think if we respect one another and take the time to communicate from a mature perspective, we can find that we're better when we're aligned and when we're not aligned. This is where Kai was probably thinking, bro, I'm tired of like, because by the way, you know Kai deals with a lot of shit, bro. You have all these people in the music industry that probably want to reach out to him. And whether it's not Kanye or this Kanye or not Kanye, they all want to kind of like, you know, make him feel a certain way and 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 sometimes it does get a little bit demeaning like like he's just a pawn like they they feel they could control his opinion or his voice or they talk to him like he just yo you're just a streamer you just sit in a chair bro like you just sit in a chair yeah you just sit in a chair like you know just shut up that's when things can go left and i want to keep things center and i appreciate you for taking the time and considering these words all right, um, my understand that, right? But my, my, you said what? My understand what? that, my understand that. But you have to understand why the man have come so crazy to me in the first place. Me say the pants don't fit, the pants don't fit. You said what? <laughs> my fault, my pants all just came out. I'm just saying, like, my, um, <laughs> you feel what I, I could, I could, whatever he want to do, we could resolve it. I don't care. Um, just due to the fact that, like, I, I was, I had no disrespect. You feel me? And I just feel like um, what we was going back and forth on was a little was a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 um, you gonna um, how can I how how can we go about moving forward with this? Um, I think we just need to develop a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I know this is my first time meeting you. This is my first time speaking to you. What city are you from, sir? I'm from the Bronx. Oh, okay. I used to live in the Bronx on two forty first and Two That's down the block from my block. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you should, so you should know we don't go for no bullshit. You said what? So you should know that we shouldn't go for no bullshit, no disrespect. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand. Yeah. I, I get it. I lived in New York for seven years. I get it. Okay, and I lived, I lived there all my life. Big homie Chris Lighty from the Bronx. Okay. I'm a, I'm a violator. You're a what? I'm a violator. What that mean? Violator, Chris Lighty. You don't know who Chris Lighty is? Okay, no. This is a little bit of, you know, age gap and, you know, uh, um, just. So, Violator was, I believe, I believe like a record label, wasn't it? Um, Chris Lighty, Violator. I think it was a, um, it was a record label. Yeah, Violator was a record label. Uh, and, and I think, it, 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 was 50 at one point signed to it? I'm I'm trying to see. He revolutionized. Let me see. The, 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 the. We probably got to watch a little documentary on this to kind of get a little bit more. Like obviously I know it's the label, but do, do I know the whole history? I probably don't. And if I don't, you know what I mean. I you know it's understandable that Kai don't. And here's the thing about when when the conversation has a tint of disrespect, Kai is hearing things differently, right? Nah, gang. You've never heard of Violator Records, Violator Management, 50 Cent? Nah, I was, I was born in 2001. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nah, but yeah, you, you, you seem very polite. I respect you, first of all, for even calling my phone um, yeah. um, and reaching out. It takes a lot. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm just with whatever energy that's coming out to me, I'll, I'll, I'll happily just, you know, display it back. I just don't, I just want us to be, you know, it's, it is better for us to be together, you know, than apart. Yeah, definitely. So, so um yeah um just let just let Ye know I said that um yeah just let him know what I said and if however you want to move forward we can move forward with it you know yeah. wait 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 we, where, where he at though we in L A but I be in New York all the time I could actually be in New York tomorrow if we need to link up oh <laughs> you trying to backdoor me what does backdoor mean what does that mean. Yeah, okay, Kai is hilarious. What does that mean? 
Like, you trying to like? Why you want to link up so fast? Like, I thought we just building a. I, I don't. I don't move slow. Okay. <laughs> Yo, this conversation is so funny because this looks like some shit you would see in a movie because literally they're talking past each other. And really, you know, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, uh, um, John Monopoly did not even mean to be disrespectful, but he came across disrespectful. And and Kai's listening to everything and receiving it in a different lens than John Monopoly is saying it. I ain't gonna lie. By the way, what happened to Kanye West's other manager? He, like, the last manager I know he had was was Boo, which was Akon's brother. So, it, Kanye manager Boo, which is Akon's brother. Yeah, in 2022, he was the manager, right? Oh, he took the executive vice president role at Columbia. Oh, okay, okay. So, he probably left Kanye. He was known for managing Ye. Okay, so he probably left Ye. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Executive EVP of Columbia. Okay. All right. Yo, boo, what's good with you, brother? I miss you working with Ye, man. You the nigga used to send me the free Yeezys. I move mad slow, so we're going to have to get to know each other first. You heard? Okay. You heard? Yeah. <laughs> Um, nah, I, nah, all, 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 all jokes aside, though, um, appreciate you. This is my number. You can lock me in. Um, yes, sir. You lock me in. My first name is John. Just, just let, just Last let. Name Monopoly. Okay. Just let, just let, um, yeah, just let Gay know. I feel like it was a misunderstanding, me personally. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. Um, and we just, you know, we just move forward from there. Just let me, just update me, you heard? All right, I hit you back. Thank you, sir. All right, bro. I wonder if he he'd let him know that that was on air. I don't know if he, if uh, John Monopoly knew that was on air. Anyway, John Monopoly then commented on something. I guess he saw that clip <coughs> floating around. And I guess this is a picture. <coughs> oh, my God, my allergies. God damn. This is a picture of both of them. And, um, hold on. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> he says, we good. But if we ever need a link up for a face to face, I'll meet him in his hood on 241st and Carpenter. Just me plus one. He could bring his whole team. Just so y'all understand the type of time <coughs> I'm on. May Allah bless you all. Damn, this is like a friendly threat. This is kind of cool. Like a friendly threat right here. I'll meet you in the hood. I'll come in plus one. You bring your whole team. I just want you to know what type of time I'm on. But may Allah bless you all. Okay, this is like one of them old school gangsters. I don't even fuck with a nigga like this. I don't even play with him. He's serious. He, 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 you got problems with him. He coming through. He not going to do that bunny hopping shit like me. He really coming through. Holy shit. Did Kyra respond back to that? Did Kyra respond back to that? Did you? I don't know if you reacted back to that. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Did he? After this chat, I got one. I got one more topic, and then I, I do got to run. I ain't gonna lie to you. More will be revealed soon. Here we go, here we go. Let me see. Did you ever respond? No, I don't think you responded back. Okay. All good, all good. Um <laughs> I see Phantom tried it on and shit like that. <laughs> Yo, what type of sizes does Ye have, man? Like, I think that pants might be too big for me. Okay, anyway. Yo, Last topic, truly, have y'all seen the whole thing that they're saying about Bruno Mars, right? I ain't gonna lie to you. This kind of made me feel like, yo, act, you better stop gambling, nigga. MGM, oh, they say he denies it. Oh, what? Okay, report did surface, right? That said, um, 
they, they there was a report that said that insiders claim that Bruno Mars was fifty million dollars in debt to gambling at MGM, which is kind of interesting because he has a working relationship with them. He works for one of their um, um, other hotels that's under the brand of MGM, which is called the Bellagio. And apparently, it, it, like, let me see if I can find the original report, which, uh, let me see. Da, da, da. So I'm guessing they're officially debunking it. But Bruno Mars, let me see. I'm trying to find the original rumor that we could that we could fucking at least Bruno Mars Yeah, okay, okay. Here we go. So this was what it was. It says, your source spoke with News Nation claimed he owes millions to MGM from gambling. His debts have gotten uh, high as $50 million, and they're saying MGM basically owns him. Now, here's the funny part because, you know, I always say gambling is 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 kind of like a interesting – it's an interesting thing about gambling. You know, first of all, addiction is addiction, so if you're addicted to gambling, it's like anything else in the world. Even though – and also it's not good, but – Usually people's, you can't really judge the number of how much people gamble. It's because they're going to gamble in proportion to what they have. So when you see 50 million, that sounds wild. And then you read more and it says, allegedly, he makes 90 million a year off of a deal he did with the casino, but then he has to pay back his debt. So, you know, I mean, I mean, that doesn't even sound, of course, 50 million sounds crazy, but. I understand why a nigga would lose fifty million if he makes ninety million from the same casino, right? He did, you know, like for example, like look at people like train wrecks with steak. You know, what I mean, they, they they pretty much probably lose maybe sixty percent of the money that they get from steak, right? Allegedly, they they lose it back if that's real money, right? But it says uh, he makes ninety million a year off of a deal. Now the deal is, I think he has a residency or something like that at the Bellagio. So in back in twenty sixteen, the president of MGM. Claim that Bruno is the most talented performers in the world and blah, 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 blah. Then say apparently he supported himself by playing poker one time. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. There was a little bit more details, but basically they were saying that he kind of has to work for the casino for free because his gambling debt um, became over $50 million dollars. And um, the the debt basically offset what they paid him after you, he gets taxes. So he's just basically working for free and he's gambling all his money away. Now, officially, this came out and salute to um, TMZ and others who have, you know, clarified. It says apparently he doesn't owe millions in gambling debt to uh, MGM Resorts, um, despite what a recent report claimed. A rep for MGM International says the singer doesn't have a $50 million gambling tab on the books with them, even though some uh, recently alleged the opposite. They came to Bruno's defense calling the allegations that he owes a massive sum completely false. In, in fact, they're, they're excited to collaborate with the singer again in the future, not exactly the tone of someone would take uh, with a dude with a fat bill. They add, we're proud of our relationship with them, one of our most thrilling and dynamic performers from the shows at Dolby Live at uh, Park MGM to the new Pinky Ring Lounge at Bellagio, Bruno's brand of entertainment, attracts visitors from around the globe. Uh, their partnership is longstanding and rooted in mutual respect. Any speculation otherwise is completely false. He has no de debt with MGM together, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, right? I'm going to be honest with you. I think that this casino put this statement out to literally save face. You have to realize a casino is not going to publicize people's debts. A casino is built upon the thought that it, it, this is why Stake wanted, wants you to feel like Drake keep winning, right? Like you're watching Drake gambling. He's winning. Making, you want to feel like you could win and you could gamble. This fucking casino is not going to come out here, but of course he owes us $50 million. They're going to be like, no, there's no debt. What are you talking about? There ain't no debt. Now, here's what I think is actually happening. I don't think he owes them $50 million. I think he's down $50 million. He had 50 They have it. That's different from a debt. A debt is, hey, 
y- y'all spotted or y'all gave him markers, like in the casino world, it's markers, which is almost like a loan. Yes, a casino could give you a loan. They give you a loan, and basically you gamble with the loan. No, I think that he's probably lost a shit ton of money. And yeah, if you're in a gambling place and you have tens of millions to play with and you like to gamble, you're probably going to lose that. You get what I mean? Now, granted, I'm pretty sure they have a good relationship with him where they might give him some great comps. They might give him like some even some of the money back, right? Give him some extra shit on the fucking Bellagio, uh, on the Bellagio pink, whatever performances. Of course, like, you know what I mean? The casinos, even though they're robbing you, they want to make you feel happy. Like, you know, like they're going to rob you, but they want you to feel at least happy. While they rob you. You get what I mean? So, of course, they're not going to come in here and be like, oh, yeah, we're robbing this nigga blind. He owes us mad money. No, because that would dissuade other people from going there to gamble. No, there's no debt. I guarantee one thing they won't say. Show show, show us his his um, um profit loss from the last two years. I guarantee it's maybe like 5 or $10 million. He got a lot of money to play with. He got a lot of money to do his thing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, I personally think that he's down money. He's down money, but it's not in debt. Debt means he needs to pay it back. He lost the money already because they're paying him either monthly, bi-weekly, or per show based on his agreement with whatever like residency he has there. So he's gotten a lot of money from them. He probably gambles with that money. So again, debt usually means you have to pay back, but you're not in debt what you already lost, right? You just lost that money. So I personally believe that he's lost. He probably does have, bro, yo, if you're in a casino and you, you are prone to addiction to anything, whether it's liquor, um, hard drugs, fucking smoking, anything, you put that person in a casino with a lot of fucking money, and especially if that person has, you know, likes, you know, chasing a dopamine high and also loves money, who doesn't love both of those? You give that person a bunch of money, you could even give that person $10 million. They might be like, cool, I could turn this 10 into 11, right? Next thing, you're down to $2 million, right? So again, I do believe this nigga's down money, and I would have to hear it out of his fucking mouth. That he's not down a shit ton of money and eight figures at that two MGM casinos overall. But do I think that they got him on a payment plan to pay the money back? No, I think he already lost it. Yeah. Um, here's the good thing about it too. Even if he wasn't that shit, ain't life good when you know you lose fifty million and supposedly you're getting paid ninety for the uh, for the year. That, that works, right? You lose 50 or you owe 50, but you get paid 90. You know what I mean? This is rich nigga problems right here. So, again, you know, by the way, you know, addiction still operates the same no matter what scale it's on. But, you know, I think this story jumped out of the, the jumped off the page because we, we saw things like the casino owns him. We're thinking they got like a fucking, a fucking leash on him that's like a shackle that he can't go nowhere. He's just performing every night and then gambling. There's just, keeping him on a leash no I, I, i'm pretty sure he's an addict like most you know like think about like how much money you think like michael jordan lost in gambling over decades like you might have lost 100 million 100 millions of fucking all the money in the world to us but to him he might be looking at it like bro i'm like a fucking billionaire like i'm like super duper fucking rich like 100 million shit i had a good time doing it right you know, who knows right that's why I say gambling is all based on what the person has. Now, if he lost fifty million and he was only making five million for the year, yeah, you'd be like, "Nigga, you're fucked." But it, it, even if it's true that he was making ninety, shit, that's, that's a lot of fucking cash, right? Somebody said he made he made almost a billion from the casino. He good. See, there you go. There you go. Now, granted, I'm not over here trying to co-sign gambling, but, but like, you know, sometimes these stories lack substance and depth. And, again, I, I do think he's down. But at least the casino working with him because they could be like, yo, this nigga's a gambler. We don't we – could, we could just give that money to another performer, and he's still going to gamble here. But it probably incentivizes 
them they get a return back on the gambling level from it for him and he gives a good show shit it probably works out for everybody you know what i mean so i said mj do got cigar smoke eyes yes yeah come on now hmm Plus the bro need rehab for gambling. Shit. Yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? Anyway, people, I ain't gonna lie to you. I do gotta run. I do gotta run. It's 4 a.m. I got a I got a lot of things I'm doing um um in the next few days. I can't tell you exactly why, because Meek Mill's trying to kill me. So I will give you some slight updates, but I will tell you very big things are on the horizon. It's about to happen. Please go watch. The first interview that, that dropped, uh, I dropped the Dean interview. Hopefully, you guys get to, you know, get a, a better insight of who he is. You know, I'm going to be posting up some things on the gram, supporting him. Uh, again, this ain't just about the F Meek Mill campaign. This is also trying to get have this platform that these guys could use it to make whatever ends meet for them. You know, that's that's the point. You know, they, and I told him that. I've told Poundside Pop, I said, bro. Drop some fucking music. Like, you got some attention? Drop some music. And if I could help you put that out there, it's all good. You know, because it, it shouldn't only be the interviewer that wins when it comes to, like, a bunch of attention. So I encourage the people who I'm interviewing, put some product out. What the hell? Shit, you, you have more than normal amount of eyes on you at this time. You know, go crazy. All right? Okay, cool. So we do have more interviews dropping, but I am cooking up some special shit. I wish I could tell you. I can tell you some really special shit. Um, non meek related, actually. It's not meek related, okay? But, yeah, chat. I'm about to get off of here for now. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Go watch that on the main channel. Uh, if you guys are watching this on either channel, make sure you please, you got to hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 700,000 um, on uh, King Academics, and we want to get at least, like, to 210. Um, 210k on the academy okay by the way i'm we're gonna be dropping a troy Ave pod is like a lost episode before he had got locked up we're gonna drop one of those pretty soon and um we actually have some some new piloted shows that we're trying out so just keep your eyes open and um thank you guys for watching i will be back okay chat love y'all have a safe night have a good sleep Get ready for work tomorrow or get ready for school or, you know, get ready to chill. Love y'all. Talk to us soon.